Jack Ishes himself. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's do some Ninja Turtles. We've talked about the IDW Ninja Turtle series. Well, this was the original Eastman and Laird 1984 Ninja Turtles. Oh. We're going to talk about the old school, baby, the original, the OG Turtles. <laughs> Where it all came from. It's where it all started. Baby. I'm sorry, you're telling me that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles started in 1984? That's correct. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, as of the taping of this episode, it is the 40th anniversary of the Ninja Turtles. I could have sworn I this was of. the 70s. Yeah. Like 72, 73. Yeah, no, 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 that no. cartoon came out in what? 87. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, in the movie? 90. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they shot it in 89. No, it was, yeah. It took off. They're took like, off, oh, this is going to be great. It took off like a shot. It was just immediate, so. Just turtle's fever. Oh, turtle mania. Turtle yeah. mania, oh. That's right. Is that what they called they, it? They coined it. All and right. it's never reached those numbers again. But. <laughs> Shell shock. <laughs> but it does exist. People still, I mean, listen, there's always a new Ninja Turtles cartoon. Like every 10 uh -huh. years, there's always yeah. a new one. And, and they put out movies. They put out movies. They put out comic books as well. And uh, yeah, in fact, a brand new Ninja Turtle series, actually the, the old series is being relaunched. The Don't call it a reboot! <laughs> <laughs> That's right, IW would very cross to hear you call it a reboot, because it's not. It's a relaunch, <laughs> of, which means we're not the, regarding, of the IDW series, which okay. has gone on for okay. about 150 issues or so. Mm. So, you know. Interesting. When we say relaunch, does that mean they are not throwing away? They're not throwing continuity? away the continuity, but they okay. are not going to be steeped in it as much. It's okay. like, we're not going to refer to it too often, and we're going to try and just get back to basics. Yeah, but, but it all still happens. Are they going to retell mm -hmm. an origin story? No, it'll just be like, here's where they are now. They'll jump back right. in. There's a new status quo for the Turtles. New status probably. quo for the Turtles with a brand new creative team, mm -hmm. including Jason Aaron. Middle-aged mutant ninja <laughs> turtles. <laughs> Let's hope not. I don't need that. <laughs> this is IDW now. Oh, At the yeah. time, I assume it was... At the time, it was self-published. Oh, Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, two burgeoning artists in the Northeast who were like, I want to make comics. In fact, they didn't know each other. They uh, found each other by Eastman seeking out uh, artistic endeavors. He was like a lobster fisherman. What? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, and in fact, <laughs> kept doing it, like, into turtles. He was like, ah, if this turtles thing doesn't work out, I'll, I, at least I have a trade. Well, and not only that, but I still like eating lobster. Well, who doesn't like free lobsters? <laughs> like, a couple of those lobsters are going to fall out of the box, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I mean, if you're the lobster fisherman, no, you get free lobster. You've got to get free lobster. I mean, you, you're from Maine, you know. Well, you don't get free lobsters because that's your that's your livelihood. That's like throwing money down the toilet. Yeah. yeah, but if you're a farmer, you eat your own produce. Yeah, but your produce is almost worthless if you're a farmer. If you're a lobster, but every one of those lobsters is, is worth a potential like several dollars. Yeah, you yeah, know? several bucks. But at the same time, a like, potato's that's worth a like free... three cents. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm <laughs> not gonna get my return at the market. <laughs> I'm, I don't have to buy that lobster then. That's true. You're getting a better than fair market yeah, but, value. But you don't need to eat lobster at all. <laughs> Lobster's a luxury, you well, see. Yeah. If you eat one lobster, that's like eating like multiple bushels of wheat. Mm. You know? Like, you're not going to do that as a farmer. Well, but if it's plentiful, then you might. You know? Maybe if, if it's lobsters a good are season. ridiculously marked up. Well, I, I mean, I, I mean, think we definitely. all know they are. <laughs> <laughs> so Eastman finds out about like this kind of like magazine that's coming out that has like fun art and he wants to get a job as an artist and they're like we don't need you we have this other guy named Peter Laird and he's drawing but maybe you should talk to him so he does Peter Laird and Eastman immediately hit it off and they uh, become friends and they uh, I think the idea was that Eastman was actually really impressed because Eastman was like a hardcore die in the wool comic book fan loved comics and mm -hmm. it would be to his detriment that he would love them so much and uh, Peter Laird also loved comics when Eastman came to Laird, uh, he saw that Laird had a piece of original Jack Kirby art in his apartment. And he was like, this dude's legit. <laughs> he knows who Jack Kirby is, mm. and he managed to get some of his art. That's amazing. So they became friends based on their mutual love and respect for comic books. And then they uh, moved in together and they made comics. And uh, they made a couple of comics before Ninja Turtles, but of course none of them were read by anybody. So Eastman and Laird are farting around. They're just hanging out, a couple of bachelors in their apartment, doodling, making comics. And Eastman reportedly drew a picture of a Ninja Turtle as a joke, just to make uh, Peter Laird laugh. This is the original turtle. <laughs> That's awesome. Right? That He's looks like, 
He's nothing like no. what they would eventually become. No, he's got nunchucks like strapped to him because, of course, yeah, how could he wield them? Right. Yeah. And, of course, you know, as you pointed out, ninjas are supposed to be stealthy and fast, and, and turtles are, are not that. It's the complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. The irony. And so uh, then Peter Laird drew his ninja turtle as a kind of like compliment, like, well, here's mine. And they were like, oh, my God. We've got something. I think we've got something. And they wrote... Each of them could have a different weapon strapped to them. <laughs> right. Maybe maybe they can hold them. Maybe they can hold them. Maybe they can, they can be dexterous. Maybe they're maybe. mutant turtles. Well, they... So they wrote down on the sheet, like... Ninja turtle. Ninja turtle. And then one of them wrote, mutant ninja turtle. And the other went, teenage mutant ninja turtle. Just and I, and I could see how the escalation... Of like a couple of dudes in their 20s. Because mm -hmm. that's, how do you come up with a title like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah. It's like, it has to be an escalation joke between two idiots. Right. And so, uh, you know, history was born. They were like, we got it. They do. Then they immediately start drawing the first issue and they do it. And uh, they get a loan from, uh, I think Eastman's uncle gave them a bunch of money. And so they, they, they published their amount. They had a little bit left over, which they used to take out an ad in Previews Magazine. And thank God they did, mm -hmm. because otherwise no one would have friggin' read that book. Because in previous magazine, comic book stores were able to see it, comic book fans were able to see it and ask the comic book stores for it, but they saw this ad that was like a, a picture of what would become the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with the name, and it just people were like, it's 1980 friggin' four which means I have to like the Ninja Turtles. Like they, they knew even before it existed that they had to have it, and so it became a thing. First run, sold out immediately. Second run, sold out immediately. And they're like, oh. I guess we need to make more. Yes, and so they, pre they, they create their publishing house, Mirage Studios, named thusly because uh, their studio was a Mirage, because it was actually just an apartment that they right. lived in. Because yeah. there was no studio, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so the rest is history. They kept working on By like issue three or four, they're already getting offers. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. an intrepid producer uh, reached out to them and was like, I've, I could figure it out, and eventually procured their deal with Playmates to make the action figures. Okay. And of course, as a result of making the action figures, back in the 80s, the formula was, I gotta sell toys, how do I do that? With a syndicated cartoon show, so. A cartoon show history. that is apparently drastically different. You know, it's, it's, At least in tone. Yes. Uh, yeah. they, they did have uh, a lot of input into what the show would be. You know, the, the suggestions from the cartoon were li literally just like, Give them different headband colors. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, uh, all red is confusing. <clears throat> yes. Through it all, the two of them actually managed to retain creative control over the turtles. Of course, immediately, Peter Laird was upset with like concessions and decisions made, for example, in the cartoon show. Mm. He did not like Bebop and Rocksteady. Oh, so they weren't part of the... They were not part of the original. In fact, it took a long <clears throat> time for Bebop and Rocksteady to get anywhere near the comic books because huh. Eastman mm. and Laird retained complete... And Total right. control. Like, we're not doing that. Right. We're not doing that. Not while I'm around. Yeah. So they didn't create them. The TV show created them. And they're like, you don't get to decide what's new in this universe. Right. This is ours. That's right. Well, no. Eastman definitely was like, oh, yeah, no. Bebop Rock City, I don't give a shit. Put them in the cartoon. Like, let's go. <laughs> and uh, Laird was just like, well, they're not touching our baby. <laughs> you know, because the, the purest form of it will always be the comics that you and I make, pal. And Eastman's like, yeah. Okay, whatever. Okay, well, I'm going to become a millionaire and leave. I mean, they both became millionaires. Right. But one and of them, now I can afford to eat my own lobster. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now I'm ordering the lobster. <laughs> what is the first run of the Ninja Turtles? Um, very familiar from what you know, and yet drastically different. And mm. you'd be surprised how fast. Like, how quickly it goes from like, yeah, I get this, to a what? <laughs> of course, the Ninja Turtles arrived on the scene during the emergence of the black and white indie comic scene. And so that also gave them a lot of indie cred. Mm. Um, but another thing that I love about uh, the- It's because they couldn't afford colors. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, no. Like, like most indie. All of them, yeah, that's yeah. the idea. But like then they, they leaned into the black and white. We're right, like, they're like, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're intentionally doing well, black and white. <laughs> we, we all know it's because we can't afford color. Right. But we're going to utilize that to some degree. You know, we're mm. gonna like lean into the black and whites and maybe like the kind of edginess that comes with a, a black and white kind of comic book. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Eastman and Laird worked on this book together. When I say they worked on it, I mean they draw and then they pass the page to the other, erase oh. and draw. So there's no real way to tell. I mean, huh, like it, whose heart is whose who. is whose in the first like few issues of the run. Okay. Eventually, hmm. you'll see like you you can tell who drew what later on, but on the, in those first several issues, it's like it's a perfect marriage of two creatives drawing the same thing. 
Huh. And there's no true writer because each of them just said what the other one was going to like. Yeah. Oh, and then, then, then they say this. You know, <laughs> oh, and this, and this. Yeah, it's, so like, it's a perfect collaboration. But uh, the first issue is like giving away the store. I, I couldn't believe when huh. I first read the first issue, like how much of it is, you know, canon, but also like, wh where are you going to go from here, man? Because the story opens and it's the Ninja Turtles and they're fighting like the Purple Dragon Gang. And it's just, look at them. Immediately you're just like, there they are, and they're pretty much fully formed. You're like, oh, they, each of them has their names, their weapons, and their attitudes, and their design. You're like, yep, that's Ninja Turtles. I'm in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sold. And, uh, and these guys are already like, this is the coolest effing thing. <laughs> like that double page splash of them just leaping in. It's just Eastman and Lair. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah, baby. We're here. We're here, and the world will never be the same. And right. then they kill Mikey on the second page. Right, and you're like, what? <laughs> no, uh, they, 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 they kick the shit out of slash murder the purple dragons because oh. this is by two 20 and 30 somethings. Right. And they're just here to have fun and pay homage well, to the comics they thought were rad and awesome when they were growing up. Yeah, the purple dragons uh, have guns. So they gotta, they gotta, they gotta take them out. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh, they're no, trying they're, to kill us. We're gonna kill them back. Well, and they're, they're, they're ninjas. They're like ninjas kill people. I have what? a sword. What am I supposed to what do? What am I supposed to do with this? I'm not going to cut the bullet in half. I'm going to stab you <laughs> okay, to death. I, I have a stick. I guess I'm just going to bludgeon them to death. Well, you Donnie, knock them down, and then I'll stab them to death. Donnie murders someone with his staff in such a brutal and grisly way. I'm like still waiting for it to happen. It's never going to happen in multimedia, uh, but I'm like, I was like, whoa, <laughs> Donnie, what are you doing, man? And I'm like, yeah, I guess if you're Donnie, that's what you're going to do. Is he gonna like jab them right yeah, yeah, in the throat? It's it's not like he's like I I I found the soft spot in their skull and just blah, no you'll just he just he jam it down their throat <laughs> all the way through their body and then scrambles their organs yeah no he turns them into a scarecrow <laughs> it's, it's much easy it's it's much more simple than that but uh, okay. anyway I imagine he just like cracks them in the back of the neck and breaks it that'd be amazing no that that's too subtle it's got to be more graphic right but okay I can't wait no no there are a lot of not too subtle references to Frank Miller mm -hmm. uh, particularly his Daredevil run they loved his Daredevil run, and so as a result, like, instead of Daredevil fighting the hand, it's the Ninja Turtles fighting the foot. Right, right. <laughs> and of course, uh, Daredevil cool. was trained by Stick, so the Turtles are trained by Splinter, and Daredevil gets his powers from radioactive goop getting into his eyes, and so the Turtles get their powers from a blind man crossing the street in New York City when a young kid who looks suspiciously like Matt Murdock jumps into the way and saves that guy. Huh. And this ooze gets into his face, but a canister flies off of him and then coincidentally smashes a child's fishbowl full of turtles. And then the ooze and the turtles fall into a sewer where the ooze canister breaks and then the turtles fall into the ooze, and then Splinter the rat finds them and then raises them right. as they all grow in intellect and physicality. Uh, the implication is that uh, the Daredevil origin is directly connected with the Ninja Turtles. Right, like that was Daredevil. It was Daredevil, and uh, <laughs> Daredevil got his powers from that, and also the Ninja Turtles became the Ninja Turtles from that. No. <laughs> I like, mean, well, no, Marvel would never, Marvel would never say, that, say that, that unless they did a crossover where it was in another universe. Mm -hmm. But also, it can't be because of the implication of like where the ooze came from and all that stuff. Oh. But whatever, it's fine. It's mm -hmm. just it, it's a fun it's little a fun like, reference. Fun reference, and it's inside comic books. And yeah. people today are still like, where is the Ninja Turtles Daredevil crossover? We need to square yeah. the circle of the origin story. And I'm like, it's it's a reference. <laughs> right. It's not literally. It's not literally that. Daredevil. Yeah. They there just, are no hand and foot clans. No, it's a joke. But I mean, if you <laughs> it's want not to like it's not like Daredevil shows up in the comics no. like, later. They keep crossing paths because they're in the same city. Like, yeah. No. No, it's just a little joke. It's just a little reference. Well, so they what do the said. origin in the first issue. Yeah, they explain the origin. Oh, the the yeah, turtles do. The turtles were, were, were yeah. some uh, kid's pet, Chester, I believe the child's name was. Hmm. Uh, but he holds a fishbowl full of turtles, and a canister falls off of a truck, and it hits the. Fishbowl, falls into the sewers, cracks open, turtles fall into it, Splinter gets into it. But before that, in Japan, Hamato Yoshi, a member of the Foot Clan, is in love with a woman named Tang Shen. But for the jealousy of another rival member of the Foot Clan, whose name is Oroku Nagi. 
Okay, yeah, different. We'll, we'll get there. He eventually like breaks into Yoshi's place and just beats Tang Shen savagely. Oh. And then Yoshi like kills him. Fair he, enough. He yeah. beats him to death. And the Foot Clan are like, well, I mean, that's what happens. And then <laughs> the uh, Oroku family is hurt and angry at the death of Nagi. And so... Oroku Nagi's brother, Saki, lives uh, to the ripe old age of 18 when he becomes the Shredder and brings a, you know, takes over the, the Foot Clan and then brings the Foot Clan to New York to get revenge for his brother's death. So Yoshi moved to New York? Yes, he was excommunicated from the Foot Clan and then moves to New York with Tang Shen. Hamato Yoshi comes home from like a hard day of American life to find that Tang Shen has been murdered and Oroku Saki is there and he's dressed as the Shredder already and oh. he kills uh, Hamato Yoshi. And of course, uh, Hamato Yoshi's loyal rat uh, <laughs> learned ninjutsu skills from his master by mimicking his movements from his cage. Okay, so that's, that's still perfectly yeah, accurate. Splinter's yeah. a rat who was trained by Hamato Yoshi incidentally. Uh, and then uh, he... And then just happened to fall into ooze with some turtles. Well, after Yoshi is murdered by Saki, Splinter leaves. And he has to flee. And he ends up like just on the streets of New York. And so he like lives as a rat in New York, <laughs> just like, feeding on garbage and living in the sewer. So he's, he happens to be in the sewer at the time when the, the turtles fall. Into the into the ooze, right? And, and he's, just, he's just he's just. Well, thank God it wasn't because... just a normal New York rat. Yeah, no, he's a special <laughs> Japanese super intelligent rat <laughs> who, who can learn. He, he knows ninja moves, but because he hasn't been mutated by ooze, he can't really use them. That's right. He's like trapped in this like useless body. <laughs> we do see him actually kind of like train a little bit, but yeah, it, you know, it's it's limited. Right. But of course, <laughs> when he's the size of a man, right? Now he can really open Let up. Loose, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, he also found like a book on Renaissance artists and names the right. turtles after them, and and then raises them as you do. As as one, I does. guess, because he was old, right? He was an yeah. old rat. Yes, he was an old rat. Right, exactly. And they were yeah, young so he turtles. Mutates, he's like, oh, I'm already old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll man. be a father figure to these turtles who are young. Yeah, who who will become teenagers? Even though the, they're an entirely different species. Y yeah. Yeah, we age differently. Like, the yeah. turtles will long outlive Splinter mm. because of, you know, their physiology. But, right. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. It was always interesting to me. They were born on the same day in the sense they all got the ooze at the same time, and Splinter mm. ends up in charge. Yeah. It's like, why? But I guess because he was... Because he is technically their elder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were baby turtles. Right. Yeah. And he's no. like, whoa, 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 I'm the oldest. I demand respect. <laughs> yeah. I will leave this out. So I'm in charge. Right. And the turtles, well, the turtles don't know and any they're better. infants, so... So they'll, yeah. they'll imprint on me and then right. learn to carry out my orders. Because, of course, these are not, like, it's a family. You, you call this and that over there? Family? <laughs> <laughs> so much for family. So much for family, huh? <laughs> yeah. But they are his child soldiers. Right. In yeah. his... Just like the foot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like, that's the life he knew. <laughs> yeah. Or at least the, the life he learned. Yeah. Because he wasn't technically like a member of the Foot Clan. <laughs> uh, then they go home and they talk to Splinter. And Splinter's like, great. You guys kicked ass and took names. That's perfect. Now you can get revenge for my master. <laughs> because that's what I've been training you for. Well, wait, so they did one mission to beat up some random... Well, they, they spent years training. But right. now they can take on an entire gang. So they should be able to assassinate one guy. Yeah, now they're ready. <laughs> right. Exactly. So they're yeah. ready. And so he's like, you need to issue a challenge to Orokusaki. And then you'll kill him for me. Okay. And I'm like, that's a little, that's a little harsh. That was yeah. always the plan. I don't know why you're uh, complaining. Yeah. That was, what are you talking but about? But that was always the plan. Was, yeah. Like, oh, my children, I'm just grooming you so that you can eventually... Uh, execute someone who made me have to live in this filth that we now yeah. call home. <laughs> someone who wronged us. Yeah, someone who well, wronged, wronged my me. master. Yeah, and by proxy me, kind of. Yeah. So the turtles are sent to issue a, you know, declaration of war to Orokusaki. Uh, Raphael ties the declaration of war to his psi and then throws it through Saki's window. Oh. Coincidentally, he the, loses a psi. He does lose a psi, but he gets another one. Yeah, but that's you so could awesome. just buy a yeah. new one, right? Yeah. Or make one. It's true, but uh, but in the movie, yeah, he does. Oh, yeah, he side. does. Yeah. Coincidentally, this happens while Saki is attempting to intimidate a business. He's okay. like, "You want my protection and my people's protection," and then this Sai 
crashes through the window and he opens it up and reads it <laughs> and it's like Dear Okasaki, you're a piece of shit, we're gonna kill you. This is, come meet me at this like rooftop where you'll meet your demise. And the, the business owner's like, so you want me to get protection from you and there's already like people promising to assassinate you via like carrier side? Like Right, you're here and this came right through my window. Uh, absolutely you can't not. protect shit. Exactly. Where was so, your protection 30 seconds ago when that happened? Right, yeah, you can't even protect yourself. <laughs> So Saki is humiliated. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I think we can all assume that uh, this is a freak occurrence. <laughs> it has your name on it. <laughs> oh, Saki is a very common name. It's like you're being hunted. It's just like it's dangerous to be around you. I think you need to leave right now. <laughs> exactly. So Saki is humiliated, and he's like, oh, I'll see him all right. <laughs> Shredder's like, going to kick their ass. I look at the top right goes, good lord, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of amazing exclamations in this, because, of course, remember, it's a couple of, like, Kids yeah. screwing around in comic books, and they, and there's no editor. There's no one who's like, "Oh, this will never fly." You can't say that, <laughs> right? You can't put that, or you can't have them make that joke because it's so weird. <laughs> like, there's a moment where uh, someone is surrounded by a group of police, and they all yell "freeze." But clearly, what they said when they were drawing it was, "Well, they can't all say freeze," so they all all these cops say different variations on "freeze," <laughs> but not like cold metaphors. You know, like "halt," "freeze," "stop." One right. of them yells, ambulate. Ambulate? Because, because they had access to a thesaurus, and they were just like, what other <laughs> words mean stop? And, and it's like, Hilarious. yeah. It, it, I mean, like, look, it is, it's irreverent and, uh, and, and subversive. <laughs> look, that one cop is going to use his doctorate, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not only that, like, look, they're validated. Because, like, not three issues in, people are knocking down their door going like, you got something! I mean, their books are selling out like crazy and they're being offered like million dollar contracts to make action figures and cartoon shows. They're already by issue two, like making role playing games based on their licenses. Oh, wow. So yeah, this is like, they, they, they're like, oh, well, like success is immediate and uh, the highest it could possibly be. <laughs> When you when you try a little bit, right? Shredder meets the turtles on the rooftop, and uh, you know he, he he's awesome looking. And why is he called Shredder? He calls himself that because he has knives on his hands. Because I got I went all in on the knives. Yeah, I that's put right. knives everywhere. Like everything on me is like a thing, mm -hmm. but I just like went all in with every type <laughs> of sharp thing. Yes, I'm amazed at how accurate. Yeah. Movie Shredder yeah. is he looks cartoon just like him. Shredder. I, it, well, again, the reason why I think the Ninja Turtles movie is like lightning in a bottle and will never be equaled is because it too was an independent movie. Mm, like it was produced right. by, I think, Golden Harvest. It was like a company that didn't exist and made nothing. Mm -hmm. And so they were just like, well, we're just going to take this and just do that. Right. We'll take the things that work about the cartoon show, the colors and the <laughs> attitudes, and take everything that works about the story, the first issue, and... <laughs> There we go. They also take, uh, they, they, they do take elements from like later stories that aren't even in this volume hmm. and just slap them together. And for my money, so good. Hmm. As it stands, it's like eh, the, the turtle's backstory slash motivation is a little flimsy. <laughs> you know, like meet Splinter, he's mad. Meet the turtles, they're willing. Meet Shredder, he's dead. So <laughs> Shredder arrives in the rooftop. The turtle's are like, all right, Shredder, we're gonna friggin' kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and then foot soldiers come down, fully formed, by the way. They look exactly like you'd expect. Yep. And the turtles fight them. And again, this book is an excuse for two hungry comic book artists and comic book fans to just draw cool shit. Yeah. You know, we've nailed the thing we've got, the hook, which is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And now we're going to watch them do things I wanted to see them do in like Frank Miller Ninja Comics, which is just slaughter ninjas with their awesome sharp weapons. Yeah. They face Shredder, and Shredder's like, oh, like, yeah, but you didn't walk away without any injuries. And like, oh. you see like the shot of the turtles, they're all like cut up and bloody. Oh, shit. And, like, yeah, let's do this. And so each of them goes and attacks Shredder one at a time, just like in the movie. <laughs> and, and Shredder's like, yeah, you, you children can't beat me. Like, not one at a time. And they're like, yeah, that's true, but we can beat you from a distance and all the same time. And so they whip out like ninja stars. They're just chucking them at him. Oh. And then they just stabbing him with weapons. And he's like, ah! <laughs> and then eventually they just, they just, they just beat him so <laughs> badly that he's ready to die. Like they just, they, they wow. work as a one. Yeah, he gets they, enough injuries. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, oh. There's a dog pile him. Right, exactly. <laughs> Well, eventually they cut him enough that his muscles don't work. That's right. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the, the turtles are like, we're not without honor. Uh, and then Leonardo hands him his sword. And he's like, now commit seppuku. <laughs> Do it. And Shredder's like, no. And he pulls out a grenade. 
Oh! And he's like, I'll kill all you! And then uh, they hit him in the head and push him off the building. And so he falls off the building with the grenade and he explodes and dies. And the turtle's like, woohoo! Okay, he falls and the grenade falls. It's not still clutched in his hand. No. It's no. possible he made it. He dies. Okay. Uh, he, he dies. He doesn't, though. He does not, because they have to resurrect him later. Because uh, Shredder is so marketable. Right. Because, like, yeah, why did they kill him? Because they only made one issue. They didn't know they were going to make an entire. Well, they, right, I mean, right. they, there was, this there was is no a doubt. one and done. There was no doubt in my mind they were thinking, like, more. Mm -hmm. But they were like, oh, yeah, we're so creative. Like, yeah. Shredder, boom, next. Yeah, we'll, we'll come next, up with something else equally iconic. <laughs> <Crusher>. <laughs> next, Mincer. <laughs> Oh boy. Juicer. Yeah, oh we're, geez, we're these are these are harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need to read some more comic books. Ugh. But uh, yeah, they kill Shredder and they're like, woohoo! They like like find his arm and they're just oh like, oh, God. there it is. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he's Jesus. definitely dead. He could not come back from that. Nope. <laughs> and he does, but not like that. <laughs> it's, is it like the Super Shredder? No. Oh, okay. No, it's good. Not. Okay. It's 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 worse, but <laughs> better than just Shredder drinking ooze. Okay. Anyway, so that's the first issue. Is you're like, whoa, okay. Now what? Now what? Now what? Indeed. The next one we got to introduce Baxter Stockman and the Mousers. Right. Okay. So the turtles are sparring in their subterranean lair in the sewers. They're having a good time, having some laughs, palling around, Oops. sparring. Reading Dune. Why not? <laughs> they probably were. <laughs> that's awesome. I should also point out. I don't know if out, you know this, but dude is awesome. In, in, yeah, that's right. In uh, in terms of design for the turtles, uh, you may notice that uh, they sport some tails. Yes. They are a bit phallic, or could be construed as such, which yes. is why you'll notice it only in these designs and in no future designs. Uh, uh, but team, turtles have tails. Well, exactly. Yeah, and but they don't necessarily like dangle between. They don't their need legs. to look like that. <laughs> and uh, but but Peter Laird liked that design, and so it's funny actually like. Laird will insist that we keep those tails in every design that Laird does. And Eastman's like, I, I don't care. I don't need Wait. people to think they have like huge dicks <laughs> swinging between their legs. Just whatever. We can get rid of it. It's yeah, fine. I don't whatever, care. whatever contributes to my million dollar empire, I, I could not care less. Right. But he, they do care. Not to just be dismissive of Eastman. Right. It's just, right. You know, he's just not married to that. He's not married to the, to the tail concept. Yeah. It doesn't make the turtle. No. Right. Clearly, because most people find out about the tails after being a fan. Yeah. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, uh, I think there were prototypes of the action figures with tails. And that was like one of the first things. Playmates like, no. Uh, no. <laughs> we're good enough to drop those tails. <laughs> those are great. I love those. Of course the tails will have to go. Of course they'll have to go. Other than that, you knew that. <laughs> and uh, you're already, you know, erasing it, I'm sure. You right. probably have versions of it that don't have it because you knew I was going to say that. <laughs> so, so let's just cut to the chase. Yeah, and, let's uh, move on. <laughs> they also have The Way Things Work. Uh -huh. Was a book I had as a child. Oh, really? It's like a, a big, like textbook size thing that is like fun drawings about like how, how things were. Oh, that's cool. These like mammoths and stuff. I don't know why. Huh. The guy like mammoths. How it's mammoths like, work? They pull things. Yeah, it's like what if mammoths were like operating all these different machines? That sounds you really see. familiar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was everywhere for a while. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. well, I remember having a book with. An inordinate amount of mammoths in it. Okay, and well, like, you yeah, probably had that. I probably had the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no way that this isn't just their bookshelf at home. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just like books that were around at the time that they like. Exactly. Yeah. The weird thing oh, to okay. me is that these aren't books you would throw away. Like, why would? Mm. How would they find these books? Well, they, oh, sold, they sold them. them. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's true. They are ninjas after all. Yeah, yeah. it would be very easy for them to steal these books. Well, they are prolific. And how do they get food? They don't buy it at the store. Yeah. No, you're not wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw the movie, they order it. Yeah, and then they pay for it with money they find. Or steal. Or steal, because you don't just find hundreds of dollars no, enough to live on lying around. No, but they hundreds of dollars, you know. But yeah, they definitely steal it. <laughs> well, from like evil ninjas and stuff, I'm sure. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, there were a ton of foot soldiers on that roof. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, 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 also wallets. they also steal it from, you know, local grocery stores. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they must operate like Frank Castle, right? They just. Yeah, they just they just they steal from the people that they're. Well, we yeah, but really. Frank Castle has the ability to fence things. Yes, that's true. But mm. they don't. No. No, they gotta have cash. Yeah, they they do need hard cash. <laughs> but it's the '80s, so like everyone's got it. Right. But also, you know, we don't really see them fight too many people. Like they fight the purple dragons, and it's presumably one of their first battles. Mm. And then they fight the foot, and now they're here. So it's like they've not, they haven't really had access to dirty money. Mm. Anyway, so they're watching TV. 
And there's this brilliant inventor named Baxter Stockman on TV, and he's demonstrating that he's got this new invention called Mousers. And they're made, I love the design of the Mousers. Mm -hmm. And they're just one-to-one -one from, the, from the cartoon show. Yeah. Just boom, that's what it is. Yep. And he's like, I got, these, I got these guys, they're called Mousers. My uh, lovely assistant, April O'Neil, will demonstrate how the Mousers are so effective. His assistant, April? Yeah, that's right. April O'Neil in this was an assistant to brilliant scientist Baxter huh. Stockman. That's interesting. Why did they change that? Yeah. I don't really know. I mean, like, why make her a news reporter, I guess, so that she can be where the action is, a la Clark Kent. Mm, you know, like, I guess. Clark Kent works at the Daily Planet so that he knows when there's, like, emergencies immediately. Right. April O'Neil can conveniently be talking about a thing that happens and the turtles can see it on TV. Yeah, I guess it's a more useful character yeah. to have. It's also better for her background to not be associated with a evil villain. Yeah. Like, oh, I didn't, I worked for him. Well, she didn't know. We created these evil robots. Well, no, right now they're commercial robots. These are, these are a value to the city. Right. Like, Baxter Stockman is looking for like a city contract. Look at what it can do to these rats. And you see <laughs> just like, annihilates it, them. it just, it, it eats them. And I'm like, it's horrific. It's, it's horrific, but also like, yeah. I mean, but here's you know. the thing, it can't eat it. It no. can't digest it. No, right. it just, Chews it and mangles it, and then what? Well, then, then it discard it. its its body. My assumption is the mousers carry their corpses to like a receptacle or something. Right. Or at least it's that's a, the idea. We never really get to see it's the mousers. It's a walking rat trap. It absolutely is. Yeah. 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 It's like the Roomba of rat traps. It's horrific. This imagery. Oh, I know. Which yeah. is like the rats like screaming and it's like yep. chomping it. I know, right? Oof. It's very bird like. Yeah, yeah, it's got to notice yeah. it. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, because so, it doesn't have arms. Yeah, that's true. Like and, but it does have those 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 kind of like raptor-esque feet. Yeah, it's got claws like a bird for feet, but no yeah. arms. I'm amazed that they managed to resist giving it wings. Mm. Right? Because it is essentially just a flightless bird. Yeah. yeah, but like, give it wings for what reason? It's metal. It can't fly. So it could fly. Yeah, well, yeah. All kinds of metal shit can fly in comic books. Yeah. Why not just make it I like... mean, airplanes are metal and they fly. So this is a realistic comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Which part? You know, the immune turtles and all that. <laughs> so they see this and they're like, that's cool. Oh, yeah? And Splinter's like, that's an abomination. Oh, Splinter's like, whew, that's going to be a problem. Uh -huh. Like, if they start, like, releasing those things into the city, it's... It'll eat and neat. kill all my... All my brethren? No, he, all my brethren. he oh. does not care. He doesn't communicate oh. with the rats. He doesn't he does have not. affinity for rats. No, that is the animated invention character, the Rat King. And I don't yeah. think he even really communicates with rats as much as he's just a homeless guy. <laughs> we cut to like the next day, and April's at Baxter Stockman's lab, as per usual, because she works there. And she's reading the paper, because mm -hmm. they got some downtime. I guess after their like, you know, fantastic commercial went to air. And she notices that there's like a lot of robberies in banks lately that mm -hmm. have suspicious points of entrance and exit, which are perpetrated clearly by the mousers. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't uh. say that. She more like arrives at that conclusion <laughs> as she's talking about it out loud. Mm. And Baxter's like, <laughs> wow, that is interesting. Come with me for a minute. Get into my elevator and check out this new area I've got. And she's like, I didn't know about this area. It like goes lower than the sub basement. He's like, I know. And opens up the doors. That's crazy, right? And the whole area is just filled with mousers. And she's like, what, where's it's an you? army of mousers. Right. And she's like, how'd you get all these mousers? Like, how could you afford that? Oh. <laughs> You're, you're stealing money and uh, making mousers. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I have stolen. Yeah, I control them. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, I have stolen upwards of $900,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> and in like That's the almost 80s, one Jesus. million dollars. Right. But that would be a childlessly simplistic number. We're innovators and creative. It's 900,000. 900,000. Just so you know, it's a real number. Yeah, exactly. But uh, unfortunately, now that you've uh, arrived at my uh, scheme, you'll have to die. Sure. And she's like, but why, Baxter? You've invented this this, this machine that the city wants. It's you could actually just, useful. You could, you could just, just sell, sell it, it like you said you were going to. Yeah, he's like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold the city ransom with it. And she's like, why? And he's like, because it's funny. I now, think it's cool. It's now funny. put on this rat suit so they can chase you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like almost that ridiculous. Like back to talking goes, it's fun. Let's have some fun. I just want to take over the city. I'm ch I'm a pathetic loser and I want to feel powerful. I've invented this thing. I got the city's trust and they 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 think these things are gonna be sold. And instead, I'm going to destroy slash hold the city for ransom with it. Isn't that awesome? She's like, what? And they're initially <laughs> gonna pay me for them anyway. Yeah. What idiots. <laughs> and so she tries to escape by getting into the elevator. Mm. Which of course she doesn't have a key card. And so then he sends her to the sewers via that elevator. 
and then sends Mousers after her to kill her. I mm. mean, that way people won't find the body. It's actually pretty brilliant. Uh, yeah. Well, then yeah. he is a brilliant scientist. And, and I so, assume that she'll be killed in the sewer by the Mousers. Well, uh, they'll they'll. They, I mean, they're going to record it and send send me video. Exactly. I'll, I'll have confirmation. <laughs> At the very right. least, they'll send me like the parts of her they consume, because of course, right. as we pointed out, they have no like <laughs> anus. So, so the masters catch up with April, and uh, she's rescued by the turtles because of course she's right, in the sewer. Of course, yay! And that's how the turtles meet April. Is they, okay. So she sees these giant walking man turtles, and she passes out. And so they're like, all right. And so they take her back to their lair, and uh, they they you know help, they nurse her back to health. And she's like, how did you come to be? Like, what is all this? And they literally go like, well, it's a long story. And then the text is like, and it's an issue one. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along. Yeah. Because we're, we're self-publishing this thing. Well, it's a long right. story. It's and it's an issue one. Go buy issue one. Yeah. yeah. It's literally the previous issue. You can just buy it. You can just buy it. There's literally two issues. I know every comic could be someone's first comic, but right. please just go get issue one. But please buy it. Please that would, buy that would help us a the lot. The third printing of issue one. <laughs> and so they introduce themselves again. And she's like, oh, this is amazing. Yay. So then they turn the TV on, and Baxter Stockman has recorded a video that he has sent to the news that is a full on threat. Where he's like, hi, who I am is unimportant. And I love him saying that because it's the huh. most important thing they could possibly know about him. But right. he's like, it's not. What's important is I'm going to destroy the city. I want a billion dollars. I'm like, okay. Now we're talking. Right? Oh, just for the World Trade Center. Yeah. So yeah, the idea okay. is he's like, I'm going to start destroying commercial buildings in New York. And landmarks. Yeah. yeah. Right. And one by one. Each one is going to be worth like a certain some dollar of value. to save. Yeah. 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 And so... Uh, eventually it'll add up to a billion dollars. Right. <laughs> uh, so the first one, and he made like a model of the building that is literally in the city that he's threatening. And he's like, oh, and he like crushes it. Like, this is what it's going to do. See? <laughs> and it's like, unless Just you... in case you couldn't imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of you are visual learners. So <laughs> How he... long did it take you to build that model, man? <laughs> a oh, a months. good five hours. <laughs> yeah. So he destroys the model and then tells them like, give me like $30 million but by this point. Or that building that you saw me destroy will die for real. Right. Uh, but I should point out that building is mostly empty. So it's just an example of my power. Mm -hmm. So then they're like, oh, man. And because April's watching, she's like, I know that's Baxter Stockman. And I know he's, like, serious. Right. Meanwhile, the news reports on it. And, like, they go to the building. And they're like, well, it's like 1.30 or whatever time he said it was going to be destroyed. And it still hasn't happened. So that's what we get for airing Crackpots videotapes that come in the mail. Ha, ha, ha. And then the building collapses. <laughs> and uh, April has like a real reaction where she's like literally crying. And I'm like, yeah, that's an actual reaction. It's like usually when you see like a building get destroyed in a comic book or a movie, people are like, oh, do you can't. Right. But April's like visibly weeping. And I'm like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it is horrifying. Uh, also, you know, for context, he does threaten to destroy one of the World Trade Center towers. Yeah, that's, that's what's next. Yeah, this that, was like a demonstration. That was a demonstration, was but a now building. it's going to be serious. Yeah. And uh, The news reporter exclaimed, good Lord. He does. Which seems to be a popular phrase for the characters in these books. <laughs> It, it is something to yell. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so Baxter's thrilled. He's literally watching like the video of it on repeat in his lair. April like, leaves. <laughs> yeah. He, he's just wallowing in his own crappiness. Yeah. <laughs> so the turtles and are so April leads the turtles to Baxter Stockman's lair where they threaten him with sharp weapons. Like literally, Leo's like, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll kill you well, with my you, sword. Well, you're done. What yeah. are your mouse going to do now? I'm, I'm an inch away from you. Exactly. So they uh, they threaten him. Um, they hold him. Baxter, like, hits his captor with his head. He just bonks him in the face. Oh. Runs away enough to reach a lever, pulls it. It's the self-destruct mechanism for his lab. Hmm. So he's like, you'll never be able to stop it. Uh, and by the way, it's not like the lab's going to explode. It's a, like, recall beacon for all the mousers. So the oh. mousers are going to come and they're going to eat the lab and anyone inside of it. So you're all dead. Ha, 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 ha. And so then what, Raphael... What about you, man? Uh, he's, he's, he's insane with power and... Uh, no, I control them. They won't eat me. Yeah, well, they he's printed on He's like, me. <laughs> then they eat him. But uh, no... Uh, well, no. yeah, the how's he going to turn into a fly man? Exactly, which mm. only happens in the cartoon. But uh, oh. Raphael punches him in the face, knocks him out, and they're like, all right, uh, what are we going to do? And Donatello's like, well, I do machines. So <laughs> he takes a look at the computer. And uh, he's like, this is insane. And I love, there's, there's, there's... I have an idea. We're going to tape him to the outside of the lab. Yeah. 
Because they can't attack their master. Right, exactly. He's mm. got some kind of like a don't kill me rule in them, right? Yeah. And as long as he's part of the lab, they won't kill him. No. <laughs> they just eat him immediately. I didn't have that! <laughs> Why? Why would you assume that was a protocol? <laughs> oh. Why yeah. wouldn't you make that a protocol? <laughs> it's you, you're the idiot. So, uh, but Donatello is great because he's like got the computer, he's trying to figure it out, and he's like talking to April because she's the other smart one in the room. Uh -huh. And she, one of them is like, couldn't you like make a virus that could infect the robots and make them not? It's, that would take like weeks to do. <laughs> I, I've just seen this code for the first time just now. How would I do that? <laughs> we have literal minutes. And I'm like, thank you. Because the cartoon show would 100% oh, yeah. whip up a virus. Oh, yeah. But uh, eventually they, they come to the realization that, like, it's radio. They're radio controlled. Mm -hmm. So, like, maybe we could block the radio transceiver. Okay. And they're like, nope. But we can shut the power down to the lab. Oh. So they eventually do that. Okay. Meanwhile, the other three turtles uh, go out into the sewers to wait for the Mausers and just stop them mm -hmm. to let Donatello like, come up with a plan. And so we have Donatello and April like sweating bullets trying to figure out how to resolve the Mouser issue while we have an action sequence where the three turtles fight Mousers. And it's fun and cool. Also, uh, this is one fun. of the few times where they say turtles die with honor. And uh, there's a number of moments where every single time they face certain death or some kind of obstacle, they remind the reader that they're totally willing and ready to die. Well, yeah, that's what ninjas do. Right, exactly. Right, I guess. Because they have honor and they're, they're just like, well, listen, I'm not Yeah, because ninjas who sneak into your house and kill you in the middle of the night have, have so much honor. honor. Yeah, no, that's yeah. samurai you're thinking of. Yeah. Oh, that is samurai. <laughs> that that doesn't work with the, the <laughs> syllables, though. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Teenage mutant, <laughs> samurai, <laughs> turtles. turtles. No. 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 They, oh, they try to escape by going to the elevator and it's full of rocks? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, Stockman thought of everything. And I'm hey, like, what? Hey, how hey. are you gonna get back up, man? <laughs> I wasn't. When I, I pulled that like, lever, it was like, I'm going to die in here. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm taking you with me. Invented no, I this. live down here now. This is my base. Okay, where are you gonna go to the bathroom? <laughs> in that corner. Okay. In my bathroom corner. So like, what are you talking about? There's sewers right out there. Yeah, the same place I always go to the bathroom, right over there. <laughs> <laughs> right where so, you're standing. Yeah, oh. Anyway, so they shut down the power, but they realize like it's like, the way it's set up is, it, 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 sucks, it shuts down power like one system at a time and the mouser radio control system is the last one. Of course. So we have a tense moment where maybe they'll die, but they don't, and the mouses turn off. Hooray. Okay. It's a pretty cool fight sequence. Yeah. Mousers are a good threat for the turtles because they, they can just chew Slaughter them up. Them. And yeah. I think that's, well, they're a swarm. That's why yeah. they, they made the uh, foot soldiers robots in the cartoon show. Right. Because otherwise they're just killing men. Yes, and that would be problematic. For a, for a children's children. toy commercial. I mean, cartoon show. Right. And they're like, whoo, that was insane. <laughs> that was pretty nuts. I guess yeah. this is what we do. We save the world or whatever. They're right? Or at least Manhattan. Yeah. But they're like, the police are going to come here any minute now. We have to leave. Mm. Because they're like following the trail of the Mousers. Right. So April leads them out through the sewers, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, they end up... Oh, God. So the, the third issue... <laughs> The idea that they had was they wanted to make the single longest chase scene in comic book history. <laughs> okay. So, the premise is they go to the lair. The lair is destroyed by mousers and Splinter is gone. But there's oh. some suspicious blood and a couple of dead mousers. So they're like, oh no. Well, mousers don't bleed. Right, so Splinter's dead. But there's no body, so maybe not. And so... Of course there's no body. It's inside multiple mousers. Exactly. <laughs> So the turtles uh, resolve they're going to figure Did it they out. they find a tail, like, severed? No, oh, no, they don't. <laughs> Splinter's alive. It's not Spoilers. that dark. But uh, the turtles, uh, they, they divvy up their, their responsibilities. Raphael, of course, like, no, I'm going to take him now. Like, I'm going to go find him. <laughs> right. And what's, what's great is how, like, measured they are. Like, in the, in the, in the movies and the cartoon shows, like, the, you know, Raphael's hot-headedness gets them into a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. In this one, it's like, Raphael leaves, and Leonardo goes, all right, Raph, but come back in ten minutes. Okay. Because we have shit to do. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I'm not oh, an of asshole. Course. Yeah, they're not <laughs> bickering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no like thematic conflict that they have to worry about. Right. So they're uh, they're like we gotta we gotta go because this place was ransacked by mousers and the police are gonna follow the mousers trail and they're gonna find this place. So they gotta grab as much incriminating evidence that they exist as possible. Like sure, like some homeless people might live in this place, but any of like our stuff like that says like we're turtles or whatever, we're gonna grab. We don't really get to see what it is, but they grab their stuff and then they leave with April. And April's like, that's okay. I've got a van. So they get into her van, which is clearly just a VW microbus, and they're going <laughs> to go to her place. 
as they drive towards April's place, they pass a cop and the cop's like, isn't that a van that pulled like a robbery about 20 minutes ago? Let's go get her. What? And so they chase the van, the entire issue. And shenanigans ensue. And there's, it's, it's a really spectacular, fun sequence that's like, why are you doing this? And once you find out that it's because they wanted to make the longest chase scene in comic book history, you start to understand. And they're like, right. you know, there's like little characters that are, you know, there's a lovebirds on a bridge. They got to knock them in the water. Yeah. There's all this crap. They get, Until eventually, they move the car. Yep, nonstop. Yeah, uh, but eventually, they end up adjacent to an identical van that is full of criminals who committed the robbery. Ah, it was just a case of mistaken identity. Oh my god! Oh, good, it's my cousin Vinny. Yeah, it's just two VW Micro buses from the same year. So they end up both kind of like in the chase, mm -hmm. both buses until one of the turtles tells April to like swipe the bus, which tips over the bad guy bus, and then the cops get the actual criminals and they get away. Okay. So then they go to they April's- They don't like throw another uh, shuriken at them? <laughs> no. Blow out a tire? No. And thusly ends the longest chase in comic book history. In comic book history, or at least presumably. Or at least what they hoped would be. But when the, when the criminals are stopped, they are stopped by a bunch of verbose police officers who say things like, halt, don't move, hold it. <laughs> Remain motionless, cease and desist, freeze, and do not ambulate. <laughs> it's like, all right. One of them says, make my day. Of course. Nice. Okay, well. So they end up at April's apartment, and April, like, introduces them to the comforts of, you know. Look at this panel. Look at all this detail. I know. It's, right? It's insane. It, it, every page is like this. Yeah. It's just like, oh, my God. Uh, April mentions that her father had, like, a stroke, and so he's in kind of a assisted living facility and they're like yeah like our dad's missing too or whatever you know but we're gonna get him and then uh she offers him something to drink i think Raphael asks for a beer and then <laughs> before she could administer the beer they all fall asleep she's like and she's 100 percent like down for this life she's like right. i love these guys I'm in. I'm in like these guys are adorable and fun the epilogue is well they saved her they saved her yeah. exactly so the epilogue is splinter is dying in the sewers he has mm. been messed up by the Mousers, but he defeated them. Then we cut back to what happened, and the idea is that he's attacked by Mousers. Uh, they mess him up big time, and he limps away, and ends up kind of like passing out in like a in, in a further away area of the sewers. Mm. Whereupon a couple of security agents with TCRI logo hats, okay, What's find him, uh -huh. and they're like. Jackpot. Oh, look, a rat. No, they're like, oh, look, a rat. Kill it. It's dying. But it's huge. It's, yeah. They, they, they don't. Oh, that's New York. They get pretty big here. More or less. I'm amazed we haven't found a couple alligators. You're right. Like, they, they literally go like, well, I guess we'll put it out of its misery. And Splinter goes, don't shoot me. And they're like, oh, that's oh, weird. Talks. Rats Kill don't anyway. talk. <laughs> well, I guess we'll take him with us. Well, this one does. Blam. <laughs> So they scoop them up. Hey, rats don't talk, and you're not going to ever again. That's right. Kaboom. <laughs> so they take Splinter with them to their base, which is the TCRI headquarters, which also is a suspiciously futuristic building. I was right. going to say, like, were they tracking him? No. And the ooze signature? Right. That would make sense, but it is not that. Uh, instead, uh, the TCRI agents that recover Splinter go to their base, and their base is, of course, like the futuristic, crazy-looking building with TCRI on the top. <laughs> and of course, as we know, TCRI is also the logo that was on the ooze canister that the, the, the turtles fell into. Right. Or TGRI, if you're a big fan of Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. <laughs> Splinter awakens, and he's like, oh, I should be dead, but I'm not. Cool. So he lets himself out and wanders down the hall, hears some voices, and he goes and spies into the coffee room and he sees that the, there's a table with a couple of TCRI guys sitting around it, but with big holes in their tummies, and there's these living brain monsters sitting on the table, and they're talking to each other. What? What? Yeah. These are the Ultram, or as you probably know them, uh, as Krang from the original animated series. But Krang is a derivative of these guys, which is uh, a race of sentient brains called the Ultram. Who live in your tummy. Who live, well, no. See. These guys are wearing exoskeleton bodies. Oh, okay. these, are, these are robots that look like people. Right, okay. That's why they weren't freaked out by a giant talking rat. Yes, right. they were like, oh, that's curious. Huh. Interesting. Wait, you're not native to here. All right, let's figure this out. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so we got... So we issue got... three, <laughs> brain aliens. 
Like, first issue, uh, now I'm like, Shredder. Second issue, Crazy Mad Scientist. Third issue, Brain Aliens. Or are they brains? Maybe they, I mean, they just look like. Or brains. they look like brains. They have Frank arms brain, and stuff. Th- they're, they're brains, but yes. <laughs> well, the brains the operation at least. Ho 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 ho. ho. So the turtles are training again because that's what they're doing. Uh huh. So they're always doing. Because they still got to find Splinter, right? That's right. We'll yeah, but like just because they have to sp- find Splinter doesn't mean they ease up on their training. That's right. right. That's right. Do they meditate and find him mentally? No. That's... No. There's no Force Ghost Splinter in this book. Mm. It's much weirder. Oh. <laughs> weirder than a Force Ghost Splinter. I think so. Mm. I've seen a force ghost before. <laughs> okay. They end up getting ambushed by remnants of the Foot Clan. And so they're there to exact revenge on the slaughter of their master. Some, oh, you're, okay. So mm-hmm. there yeah, is a that special- first. There, oh. In between the issues, there's a special bonus issue called Raphael, where Raphael meets Casey Jones. Uh, Moving on. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Okay, I was very confused. I'm like, that's not what's happening in this book I'm reading. No, 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 no. Uh, Raphael meets Casey Jones in his own self-titled book. Okay. And then they never reference it in the other series. Oh, really? I mean, they do eventually, but not in issue four. Okay, so Casey Jones shows up and then you don't see him anymore for a while. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's Raph's friend. Right. Right, so he could be in like a team up book with Raph. Yeah. Yeah, I don't hang out with the turtles. No, or like just a spin off. I mean, he will eventually, but for now, it's just he is a he is a friend of Raphael's. Okay. All right. Anyway, back to the main but story. Back to the main story. <laughs> uh, so they get ambushed by the foot. They kick their ass, and then coincidentally, on the rooftop they were sparring on, where they defeated the remnants of the Foot Clan foot soldiers, they end up. Seeing the T- the TCRI building, they just uh, see it. Well, they they just are coincidentally across like, the street from. Hey, that's a weird looking building. Well, they go, oh my god, TCRI, that's the logo from the ooze from the canister. ooze canister. This is insane. So they go back to April's lair, no oh, house, right? And uh, they end up talking to April, and I love where one of them goes. Like, April, do you remember the TCRI thing? And she goes, no, but I mean, like, I do remember the story that Splinter told me about your origins, and I can extrapolate that I guess that was on the canister, so (laughs) sure. And I'm like, why is this here? Um, Also, uh, April gets a new haircut. I was gonna say, it's a very Ellen Ripley haircut. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, So uh, April's like, I'm coming with you, turtles! And the turtle's like, no, you're not. You're not a ninja, you can't, it's too dangerous. That's right, and she's like, okay. Plus, it's an ooze thing, it's kind of private. Plus, you don't have a tail between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What a couple of misogynists these turtles are. <laughs> so the turtles uh, end up... Oh, God. They break into the building across the street and then, like, zip line into the TCR building. Like, it's it's very Unnecessarily complicated. complicated. Ornate and complicated. There's a Why don't they just come up through the sewers? Right. Because... <laughs> because we didn't need that. Because there's no like sewer entrance in the building. In the building, I guess. I guess. Well, it's a high security building. There's like laser grids on the sure. sewers and stuff. There's a moment where- No, like, I mean like the pipes wouldn't be big enough. They, they find like a security camera. And so Donnie ends up taking out like a Polaroid camera and taking a picture of what the camera would be seeing. And goes one step further and takes out his pigeon puppet. And then like puts the pigeon puppet in front of the camera to distract the camera enough so that he could put the picture in front of the camera. I'm like, why are you doing all of this? And I'm like, I know why, because you saw it in the movie and it was cute and funny and we're doing right. this. Okay, yeah. Yes. Because we're having fun. By the way, pigeon puppet just means I kidnapped this bird. I killed a pu- I killed a pigeon. Yeah. And I'm using yeah. it as a puppet. Yeah. It's not a puppet, that's a corpse. You can see it's a puppet. He's got his hand up his butt. It better be a puppet. It better be, or it's- Nope, I just hollowed it out. <laughs> Yeah, it's a puppet. I cut off the bottom and, and I, I shoved my hand in it. Yeah. Down you, the I'll inside. make you a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> so the turtles break in and like they, they're like, I mean, it seems to be like a weird office building. I don't see right. what's so different about it. Uh-huh. Uh, but until they find like papers and IDs on people's desks and they're in like crazy moon languages. And he's like, what the crap is all this? Why Wait, do they keep their moon language me? stuff around on the desk? Because it's their office. No one else can get into it. They had to break into it. <laughs> are you telling me that the IDs are also for the aliens? Yeah. yeah. Because they're like a corporation or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they end up like tailing a couple of, uh, of TCRI guys. So they're just chatting it up. They're like, I can't wait to go home to my, lo- to, to my life mate. And they're like, yes, I also miss my mate. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. So they There's follow something them. wrong with these guys. Yeah, I uh, cannot wait to hold her tendrils. <laughs> anyway, so they end up like finding a room and they open it up and Splinter's in like this big fucking tube. Uh-huh. And they're like, ah! 
And immediately, like, a couple of them were like, he's dead! They're just keeping him in this tomb! And like, no, it's a suspension animation chamber. It's okay, he's not really dead. Uh. And it's like, okay. A couple of, like, Ultram robots who are not wearing their flesh skins because the idea is that they are... Okay, so there's the Ultram who go in the tummy of a robot that is a bipedal human. Okay. But they also look like robots, but they have to wear skin suits. In order to right. look like people. Right. Well, yeah. So there's like two, yeah. there's three layers of the Ultrams. <laughs> it's a cybernetic organism. Yeah. Uh, a living tissue over, over metal, metal endoskeleton. Cell. Yeah. I mean, it's 84, yeah. <laughs> yes, 100%. So 85 now? So yeah, the, uh, the, the Ultram find them and they're like, what are you doing here, man? <laughs> and so the turtles like attack them, of course. Right. And attack them, they're gross monsters. So they, it was like, who are you calling a gross monster? Yeah, you're a giant turtle with, well, look at those fucking tails. <laughs> oh, gross, put those away. <laughs> Or retract them, right? That's how, that, that, that's how you work. What? No, it's a tail. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Did they show the brain aliens whose names I've already forgotten? The, the Krangs? Did they, the Ultra? Krangs? Did they yeah. show them like manipulating little levers they, inside? We do not see them use levers. No, for, from what I can tell, it's it, telepathic. It's telepathic. Ah, okay. Because they just they just sit there. They're not like okay. <laughs> it should this be moves a thing. the arm, and this moves everything else. <laughs> It should be a thing where, Somehow. like, they get inside the suit and, like, connect to it. Yeah, yeah. I assume like it is, because they're really connected. crammed in there. So yeah. I'm guessing they, like, they, are, they, they, yeah. s- like, they sloth up. It, it's almost like it. they're, like, spilling out of it. Yeah. I, well, that's how they're drawing it, because, yeah. like, how else are you going to draw it? Well, here's the yeah. thing. They've really let themselves go since they got into Earth. Right. All the calories and the yeah. pizza. We yeah, used to fit in these suits the really tellingly. Suit. Like. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The suits are one size. Yeah, you know, once they found out about New York pizza, you know what I mean. Also, no, not a lot of pizza. Yeah, mm. I, I don't, I don't think there's any real reference to pizza in this whatsoever. Damn. What? Yeah, it's funny if you ask either of them. Like I remember asking Eastman like years and years ago. I was like, Hey, so like when you and Laird were like hanging out, was was the pizza thing like you guys like hung out and like just ate pizza all the time? He's like, We had all kinds of stuff. We lived in Maine. Like we had like Chinese food, pizza, lobster. Like we, you know. And oh. I was like, Oh, okay. So the pizza thing. He's like, Nah, that was a later thing. Mm. I like pizza. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And I'm uh, like, no, I, yeah. everyone does. Thank God, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Don't trust this man ever. <laughs> Phony. <laughs> I am going to write a scathing article about this. <laughs> I'm going to make a show on a format that doesn't exist yet, and I am going to lambast you. So the turtles end up like fighting the Ultram. Uh, and the, the Ultram seem to be kind of unwilling. You're kind of like, whoa, like, we just want to know what's going on. And right. so I was like, ah! Oh, yeah. I'll fucking kill oh, sorry. you! We, yeah. we found this guy, he was injured. We're rehabilitating him. Yeah, exactly. So uh, during the foot They're fight- They're torturing him, kill him! Get him! In the, during the foot fight, Mikey cut his arm. Mm. And- uh, Like off? No, no, <laughs> just, he, he injured his arm. Okay. okay. And so this is just an excuse for, while they're fighting the Ultram in like a big space science lab, uh, Mikey is going to try and like do a maneuver and he like leaps up onto some like wires, but he's not strong enough to hold himself up there because he hurt his arm. Mm. So he lands on a control grid. So Mikey lands on the control panel for the translocation device, which of course one of the Ultrams is like, oh no, the translocation device, quick, get the hell off of it. <laughs> and the turtle's like, what? And so the turtles begin to get translocated and uh, one of the Ultras is holding Mikey back. And Mikey's like, no, if they're gonna die, like let me die with my brothers. And so he like leaps onto the pad with them. Uh. That way we can have a foursome turtles adventure. And it transports them back to feudal Japan? Uh, that would be <laughs> awful. <laughs> that would be one what? of the worst turtles movies ever. No. Oh, I don't know. I think it would be maybe cr- criminally underrated. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> yeah, no, not really. Yeah, no, not really. No. <laughs> oh, they hold the scepter too. Yeah. Oh my god. No, it transports them across the galaxy to another planet. Oh. Yay, they're in space. Now they're in space? It's it's issue five? five? It is not Dimension X. It's issue five. They're in freaking space where they bump into a robot human hybrid called Fugitoid or Honeycut, depending on what you, which character you want to refer to. Uh, Honeycomb? Honeycut. <laughs> Honeycut, Honeycut, be like Honeycut. He's a fun character. I anyway, I feel like I'm starting to lose the thread here. Uh, yeah, so are they. <laughs> oh, we gotta make this more for kids. <laughs> no, give them a ride-along character. No, this is not for children. I mean, it is because like a child could follow it, but like it's, <laughs> it, it is very much like it's just what these two guys think is rad. They're like, well, I'm sick of drawing New York. You saw all those details. I want to draw the future. Now they go to space or now whatever. Now they go to another planet where okay. they bump into Honeycut, who is a robot. But also, he's a man. Okay. So what? Honeycutt was a brilliant scientist who invented like this special thing that allowed people 
to amplify their psychic abilities. Uh, but his his like service droid Sal <laughs> is in Ooh. the fields during like a lightning storm. So he runs out there to save Sal, and uh, he ends up getting struck by lightning uh, along with the droid. Uh, oh, and, and so they become like merged or whatever. His body is completely annihilated by the lightning. Like it's a sure. core. Yeah, it's vaporized. Right. Yeah, and his brain goes into the robot. So Somehow. now Honeycut is the robot. And the robot is just is dead. gone. Yeah. <laughs> he killed that robot. Yeah. He the and like no one's broken up about it. I'm like, you literally risked your life to save this robot, and then you killed it. But you don't care enough, but you have to have because you risked becoming a robot. Right. Or dying, because you didn't know that was going to be the deal. <laughs> right. Does he know it. that he's a copy? Does he know that the original him died and can never come back? As and... far as he's concerned, okay. You're going deeper than I think this comic book is, because <laughs> the comic book says that Honeycutt went into the robot. You're suggesting that a copy was made and Honeycutt is actually dead. And that's really probably how it would work <laughs> well, in yeah. this insane fantasy world of Ninja Turtles and Space Triceratons, but whatever. Whoa, Space Triceratons? Well, we'll talk about them in a minute. I mean, you can't just transfer your consciousness from one thing into another. Yeah. You know, maybe you could copy like every neuron in his brain or whatever. Yeah into the other thing, but but the original one's dead. Right. Much right. like if you transport Well no he had that in Star Trek. Yes. It kills it kills the original and yeah, then and sends rebuilds a copy. A, a copy. No. Yeah, yeah and, the, and the copy's like, but no, I, I have all the memories. This yeah. is so always me. So I never really died. It's right. like, but there is a corpse though. <laughs> but well, I, that corpse is vaporized. Right, yeah, we vaporized that corpse. corpse. <laughs> it doesn't matter how quickly it dies. You're still calling it a corpse though. <laughs> right, yeah. We, yeah, we do acknowledge that there is a dead man. <laughs> Somewhere in this equation. No, well, he also had that like that that tele the, the telepathy machine on his head. So maybe mm. somehow the like lightning bolt supercharged supercharged it. it, and like he telepathically oh. sent his brain into the robot. Right. Yeah, maybe it's kind of like um, it is a copy though, uh, <laughs> like a trance, like a transcendence almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like he's possessing the robot. Well, yeah, because the robot doesn't have like a physical biological brain. It's no, got it like does circuits not. and stuff. So yeah. there must have been some translation right. from like biological circuitry to like computer circuitry. Yeah. Well, it's so got microchips. It's yeah, but it's 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 yeah, we don't. Yeah, right? Like it's gotta be running different like programming yeah. than the human brain. So it, no, it's not the same guy at all. No. It but just it thinks is, he is. It, it, he thinks he is. <laughs> and in the context of the story, it is him. Maybe it's just guilt. Maybe it's just like, oh, he ran out to save me. I guess I'll become Honeycut <laughs> so he won't <laughs> die. No, he's... <laughs> Because Honeycutt keeps talking about how he is Honeycutt. Well, yeah, of course he's going to say oh, that. Yeah. He's trying to live yeah. like the guy. Yeah. yeah, he's fully bought into the well, delusion. We also needed to be Honeycutt because Honeycutt was on the verge of creating the translocator device, which uh. apparently was not something that anyone could build. Uh, only, like, really the Ultram were able to successfully do it and maybe a brilliant mind like Honeycutt. Okay. So Honeycutt was going to build that, but then he became a robot. And the Federation... Yeah, there's a federation of like humans. <laughs> oh, in space? What? Yeah, yeah th but they're not like. Where Earth do they humans. come from? Uh, we all come from one master. Oh, okay. So oh, they're. Okay. Um, what is it? Humanoid. Humanoid. The federation has a law that if a robot kills a human, then that robot becomes a fugitoid and must be killed. Ah, so they're like, this guy killed, this robot killed that guy. Yes, one like, of our most no, brilliant man, minds. Lightning killed that no, guy. I am the, the guy, you fools. But it turns <laughs> oh, out. Oh, that's that, what a robot would that's say. That's what a murderous robot would say. But the general. Say anything to save his robot skin. <laughs> his, his gears and circuits. <laughs> but the uh, the general in charge of hunting down the future would also somehow knows that Honeycutt is inside the robot. Mm. But he had it out for him. He wants to steal the Fugitoid slash Honeycutt so that he can exploit his intelligence and build the translocator device. So that the Federation will have the ability to transport people across galaxies. Okay. Because once they do that, then the Federation can take over because they're also a corrupt organization. Okay. General Blank is his name. But uh, right. anyway, we'll so. Come up with something, I guess. Right. Oh yeah, Blank. B L A N Q U E. Oh, yeah. then it's Blanc. <laughs> so the turtles bump into Honeycut when they arrived, uh -huh. and Honeycut offers to like show him around because he's a fugitoid and he's trying to be like not taken over. Or... Oh, uh, I can't be a fugitoid. Look, I have friends. Would a fugitoid have friends? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I gotta blend in. <laughs> what's funny is I guess it's an opportunity for the turtles to not have to like hide from people mm. because like we're in space. There's all kinds of crazy aliens and stuff. Literally, there's a character who says something like. Well, I've never seen that before, but that's, you know, nothing new here. But in space, that's totally normal. Yep. Yeah. Look at that. That's a dinosaur walking around. Yeah. There's a whole race of those guys. <laughs> but 
strangely enough, only one type of dinosaur. <laughs> the Triceratons are right. all Triceratops aliens. No, there's not like there's the Brontosaurians or the Velociraptians. Well, of course whoa, not. These are the Triceratons. This isn't dinosaurs. Yeah, whoa. Right. Where, yeah. Or it's like a menagerie. How of, would multiple different species have all existed. evolved yeah. ascensions at the same time? Yeah, like no, only one of them would have wiped out the rest. Yeah, the Triceratons no are the smartest. Yeah, yeah. The whoever got first would keep down all the other ones, just like we keep down the dolphins and the elephants. Exactly, and the octopi. Yeah, well, definitely them. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are smart as hell, and unfortunately <laughs> and delicious. And we eat them. We do. We yeah. You know what sucks though? They are good. They are good. I hate it, because I really I don't I you know I don't want to be on record when they take over. <laughs> as, as loving the the taste yeah. of them. Yeah. Anyway. But I do. But I can't. Forbidden flesh. All I can't get consumed of them. octopus shall be put to death. Oh, good thing that you. Uh, can't I was that. I was only forced to eat it once, and I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> You may go. Uh, <laughs> we do need someone in the mines. So, <laughs> anyway, so Honeycutt explains his origins and like this insane topsy turvy universe they're in, uh -huh. and how he's like a fugitive, and how you know he's like well, you kind of you, you made kind of the worst friend you could, but also the best because I'm literally able to build a translocator the thing that device. You need to go home. And yeah. Also the best because I will do anything not to get arrested. Yes. So, well, uh, that's really convenient for us. This is like the one guy in the whole galaxy that we desperately needed to accidentally run into. Yeah, that's right. And so they did. Who won't turn us in. So the so Honeycutt takes the turtles to the cantina bar from Star... I mean, this really cool, interesting <laughs> uh, new location where there's a bunch of different aliens and stuff. And, uh, you know, they, they have some laughs. It's just a cute little moment. What is happening? They're what happened to this book? They're in space now, and this is Honeycut because we invented the Fugitoid comic before the Ninja Turtles, and we're trying to you know, blend uh, them all together. Oh, I see. It's one crazy universe. Okay. So we find out that like Blanc knows that the Fugitoid is Honeycut, and he's like, "I'm going to get that friggin' device." Right. The Triceratons, a separate race of Triceratops aliens who are not affiliated with the Federation, are in fact at war with them. Also know about Honeycut and want the transmat war device. Yeah. And so... Translocation Yeah, device. the translocation device. Uh -huh. And so we have these dueling armies that are all trying to catch Honeycut. This might as well be called Ninja Turtles Get Honeycut. <laughs> but, uh, so the turtles are being, like, helped by Honeycut while they are both being pursued by two different armies. Yeah, two different factions racing to get them. Okay. Yes. And so, you know, they end up, like, Get them, and they get chased, and there's a you know spectacular. Is it the longest chase scene. In no, thank oh, God. Okay. It's just a it's just more of like a fun action sequence where uh, yeah, like one but of the ninja space. turtles gets like an like, Raph gets like a laser gun. Oh. And he's like, oh, well, this is awesome. Now I'm gonna shoot people with friggin' laser guns. <laughs> what the hell with Psy? This yeah. is stupid. Oh. So yeah. he's having a great time. <laughs> Exactly, he's having an amazing time. You know, they have guns on Earth. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't. But one didn't fall into my hands, and it wasn't a cool laser. Right. So then the Triceratons blow up the bar, and then you know everyone's Spl Splinter's still in danger, right? He is we with the. He's with the Ultra. rescuing him. That's he's, why they're trying to get back. The, he's still in the tube. Yeah. Okay. That's why they're dealing with Honeycut. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I was like with Fugitoid. It's both. You can call me the one. <sighs> Look, you can call me a Fugitoid because that's technically in my classification. Right. But I am Honeycut. But my, my name is yeah. Honeycut. Yeah, whatever, Fugitoid. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Fugitoid. <laughs> you're, you're a stupid Fugitoid. <laughs> Shut up or I'll turn you in. Why so. did they kill Shredder in the first <laughs> issue? <laughs> they didn't know! We could have been having a fun Shredder story. Another I'm, Shredder story? I'm, I'm so, I mean, this is cool, Dude, but I'm like, this Shredder isn't Shredder the stories. same book. Have this your own Shredder stories with Shredder on sale from Playmates right now. You can play with the Ninja Turtles, make up your own adventures. Or watch the amazing cartoon show right now on... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on TV. Yeah, fair you enough. You want Ninja Turtles in the comic book purest form? You want Triceratons and Honeycuts. You could see, look at the covers. I know. Look at the evolution of the covers. Oh, we got uh, normal ground and stuff, and space, space, space. Oh, yeah. You're in space for the next three issues, at least. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. Uh, the arc we're doing is just the, is the space arc. Hey, right. this is right. Sarah was wearing uh, underwear on that cover. Oh, thank God. So, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Metal underwear, yeah. Uh, 
eventually the Triceratons recover Honeycut, and then they get on their ship. The no. turtles chase after them. They get they stow away. Uh, the ship gets away. You know, the, the Federation tries to blow up one of the Triceraton ships, and they think they've like disabled it. But it was actually just a fake like decoy ship the Triceratons no. had. Like, oh, oh yeah, what brilliant strategists the Triceratons are. <laughs> so you know, the Triceratons we always leave a dummy ship behind. Oh yeah, you know, that's, oh, yeah. that's such an economically sound uh, plan. <laughs> so the well, maybe if they're at war, you, they got an inflated uh, you know defense budget. All right. But, or maybe just like. Well, they only got one ship. Right. Yeah. They that, were expendable. That was the decoy ship, also known as the medical ship. <laughs> but uh, so the turtles stow away, and the Triceratons end up back at their home world, which is not really a home world. And I thought this would be a fun opportunity for them to make like a joke about like the destruction of the dinosaurs, because the Triceratons live on like these destroyed like asteroids with domes on them. Oh. Well, that's no, whatever that's kills oh. us makes us stronger, so we're going to tame the asteroids. Right. Oh, here we go. I guess that's it, right? Because like I, th I thought it was like, oh no, our home world was blown up, but we live on like pieces of it. No. These are asteroids they've like colonized and taken over and built domes over. Right. It's just a cool thing to draw. Yes. It is a really and th this one shot, it gets more detailed than the next one. Okay. But like what if? <laughs> yeah. They find planets that could be habitable. Right, but they hit and with they an crash the asteroids into them, killing all the na the native species and become the dominant species. And become the dominant species. Oh. That's where dinosaurs came from. Exactly. <laughs> and then they, it was just ironic that they were destroyed here. <laughs> like, oh no, it's happening to us. Yeah. What sweet irony. <laughs> so they, uh, the turtles end up like, oh, when they enter their own, uh, the Triceratons like space or atmosphere. Uh huh. Uh, it turns off the oxygen, so the turtles are like, oh no, we're gonna exfiscate, right? Oh the, my god. this network of, of asteroids. And their, their home worlds are a whole bunch of connected asteroid cities. Isn't that kind of cool? That is kind of cool. I mean, it looks cool. Like, good lord in heaven, like, how long did it take you to draw To freaking draw this, yeah. But they're like, listen, it's issue five, like, people are expecting like, We gotta big pull out all the us. stops. So the uh, what happened to my gritty, grounded ninja comic? There's no ninja stuff. They, they, they're gonna do ninja stuff. Uh. Yeah, they're gonna be stealthy. Like, look here, check this out. So the Triceratons, uh, they find out that there's like some stowaways, so they go down into like the the the, the hold, uh -huh. and they find the four turtles have meditated themselves into like a comatose state, so they wouldn't need to breathe as much. Oh, like wow. in the winter time when they're under the water and they hibernate. <laughs> right. right. So the turtles just like. And they're like, uh, what's up with the dead turtles on our ship? And they're like, wait, no, they're not dead. And so they're like, oh, they must need oxygen. Like, quick, give them like oxygen things. So for the rest of the book, the turtles are gonna have to wear these Dune-esque oxygen thingies, where like, <laughs> like a wire that goes up from a belt that goes into their mouths. Right. Oh, okay, kind of like what, how the Triceratons were wearing helmets, even though they were on a planet. Yes, like those are oxygen-rich planets. We're, like we don't need that because like you know we're dinosaurs, and I I vaguely remember one time from second grade hearing that dinosaurs. Like the atmosphere was different. Uh, or whatever. The atmosphere was different on Earth when dinosaurs existed. Okay. Yeah, it was more nitrogen, I guess. Yeah. So now we're on the dino the, the the Triceratons home world which is not a world at all. We do occasionally check back in with April, where April's like, I miss the guys, I wish I could do something, and then like cries on a couch. Uh, also, I guess she's characters. jobless now? Oh yeah, no, oh, she's yeah. definitely fired. Well, how does she eat and stuff? Uh, she's with her got, mouth. Well, it's only been like two days. Yeah, so exactly, I guess, yeah. She's, got, like, a, she's got a savings account. All right. But while that's happening, so April turns on the tube, and when the translocator device was activated that sent the turtles on this wacky adventure, a giant, like, friggin' laser or light show blasted out of the TCRI building. Oh. oh. And so everyone's like, um, and so they looked into it, and uh, as per the news report, and maybe this is where they got the idea, because most of the turtles get their information from the friggin' news coincidentally being on, uh, so they're like, we don't know where this building came from. And we looked into, like, who owns it, and we have no idea. How did that happen? <laughs> Right. How's so like everyone's asking these questions like, what's up with the building? What's up with the space laser? Who owns this building? Like, we can't get anyone on the phone. Like, <laughs> they, you know, like, cause, we, and, I, and I like how kind of almost real it is. Cause for me, I'm, I spent maybe a minute thinking about it where I'm mm -hmm. like, if you are the city of New York and you find out that there's a building that shouldn't be on a block or is different from the building on like the deed. Right. Mm -hmm. And you find out that the building was like sold a couple of years ago and you don't have any idea who it was sold to. Like, how do you get in there? I guess with a, like a battering ram? Well, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, for, for a while, but, but it's gonna take some time for them to like procure permission. Right. You know, first they have to call them. You know, and the ultra was like, oh crap, there's a, the, the city hall's on the phone. Just don't answer. <laughs> Turn off the lights. 
Why is there a telephone line at all? How do they get the number? They're a company. They're sending people out with hats and logos. Yeah, we gotta have a phone. Every real company has a phone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. but that just means, oh, the city's calling. Hello, TCRI. Yeah, who are you? Uh, we're uh, the TCRI please hold. company. Exactly, like what? <laughs> Shit, we didn't have a backstory. No, you didn't. <laughs> okay, that'll hold them for about five minutes. <laughs> okay, start the show. <laughs> start the rockets. Uh, so that's also a plot that's like heading up. You know? okay. What's going on with the CCRI building? New York's getting pretty antsy about it. Right. Also, you know, like literally yesterday, a guy threatened to blow up our buildings and one of them was blown up. Oh yeah. And, and then it just didn't. Like, yeah, that just, that just stopped. That just, that just kind of petered out. Well, I guess he was crazy. I guess Although he was, he did but he blow did blow that one building. building. Like, everyone in the World Trade Center is like, I guess we're good. Hey, where do we send the $20 million? Yeah. I got it all here. It's in a bag. Right? Oh, that's weird. We don't know where to send it. We also don't know where this building came from. Maybe did, send the money to that building. Oh. Did they ever figure out and confirm that Mousers destroyed the building? No. It just collapsed. They didn't even it know it collapsed when he said it would, so. Yeah. It's happening. The, the Triceratons are trying to strong arm Honeycut into building the translocator device. They're you know, like, build us a friggin' thing. Come on, like, build it. Look at us. Come on. We're yeah. cool aliens. They're fun. You and, trust us. And they're like the best kind. Like they are they are Spaceman Spiff antagonists. <laughs> and where they're like, impressive, isn't it, Honeycut? Look before you at this at the splendor of the Triceratons. And Honeycut's like, I would have respected if I uh, wasn't a hostage. Ho ho. <laughs> and then uh, of course like you know, we know that those turtles are your friends, Honeycut, and we're going to destroy them unless you build the robot, the translocator device. And For us, yeah. yes. And Honeycut's like, no, I, I, I won't. I, I, I barely I know means, those turtles. But I, I loathe in my life, but I also know that if you get the device that doesn't exist yet, that right. I might be able to build, uh, right. then you'll like enact you'll your Triceraton people. will across the galaxy. And right. so, Though it means my life and my new friends' lives, I'm not going to give you the information. So like, okay, well then we're just gonna put the turtles into a gladiator <laughs> tournament where they're gonna fight our strongest Triceraton warriors on TV. Oh. And we see, and like there's a moment where we have two sports correspondent <laughs> Triceratons. Uh, That's right, Kalaknar. <laughs> Good evening, fellow Saurians, and welcome once again to the Tri Sports Arena. I'm your host, Raz Charkov, and I'm Raz's co host, Zed Lake, and welcome. What an exciting lineup of sports events we have tonight. Right again, Raz. We've got a lot of great preliminary bouts, but let's talk about the main event inside Scoop. We got four off world first time contenders. Oh, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> so, uh, the, the Triceratons, like the, the greatest warriors in the whatever, they got their spears and weapons and shit. It's like a combination of like 1980s America and like the Roman Empire. Yes. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the supreme leader or whatever, and you know he's the leader because he looks exactly like all the other ones, but he has robes. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, here we go. And so, anyway, the, the point is to watch the turtles be awesome. Right. And fight giant Triceratops monsters. And they do. <laughs> and they just fight them and they murder them with their sharp weapons. At one point, Donatello is fighting one with a bow. Mm. And his bow splinters, so he stabs him to death with the sharp end of his bow staff. Oh. That's how he kills the Triceraton with it. He's just like, oh! Okay, so it turns into a spear. Yes! Oh, now I can kill something with this weapon. Oh, I should have done this broken. years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, Leonardo, you have two swords. Give me one of them. <laughs> no. No, I get the swords, you have the stick. My That's... move is two swords. Anyway, so they kill these Triceratons. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, the Triceratons are like, whoa, whoa, this is a televised event. No, no, no. We they, don't fight like that. Well, they definitely do. They're, they're like, this is amazing. Like, another upset. Congratulations, turtles. Woo. Like, they're, they're like, yeah, more. Uh, Shower them with praise and gifts. Yeah, uh, right. Eventually, uh, the turtle's like, hey, there's Honeycut. Because, like, it's like freaking Attack of the Clones, where they're at, like, the, 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 the balcony. And uh -huh. they're like, look before you. And uh, so, you know, Honeycut's there. And, the, uh, the turtles see him and they're like, oh cool, we gotta get him because literally there isn't a character in this story that doesn't want to use Honeycut to make the translocated device. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but we're the good guys, you can make it for us. You can us. make it for us though. <laughs> so the turtles perform like a big move where like they throw one of the turtles onto a like orbiting television camera car. Right. Huh. And so they land, like, hey, get out of here! And they're like, oh no! And so they get onto, they just, they just go make a beeline for the Supreme Leader slash Honeycut. That's awesome. And just drive right at them. <laughs> they dump out, they grab Honeycut and the Supreme Leader, and they're like, we're gonna kill your freaking president if you don't let us out of here! <laughs> and the president's like, oh, okay, oh, shit. do whatever they want! <laughs> and so they do. 
Now, armed with a hostage, the Ninja Turtles, yeah. our heroes, <laughs> escape this planet full of indigenous people. And what is that, Harold? Blow him away! I'll freaking waste this guy! I'll waste this guy! I've killed so Swear many people! <laughs> I've killed more people in the last 24 hours than I have in the last 13 years of life! Yeah, now I have a laser gun! <laughs> I'd kill all of you from afar! It's worse. Like, they, they, you know, they come up with a strategy to, like, flank them, and they just end up, like, shooting at them with lasers, and the leader's like, dude! And then they shoot him. Oh, jeez. So they kill their own president. Oh, my God. And they're like, oh, no, we killed the Supreme Leader! We're Whoops. gonna save the turtles in it, though. Oh, yeah, totally. They overpowered us. They took our lasers. They shot our president. And so <laughs> they're like, they're surrounded now. Like, everyone's dead except for, like, the turtles, Honeycut, and their assailants. Yeah, the army of and Triceratons. The army of Triceratons. And then suddenly they go, like, and they're like, what? And then all the turtles, all the surrounding Triceratons and Honeycut get teleported back to Earth. I guess because the. The, the Ultrams use yeah. the, like, recall signal. Ah, uh, okay. It's actually not a recall so, signal. It's much more specific. Uh -huh. But who cares? So they didn't need Honeycut at all. No. Well, we did because we needed to introduce Honeycut to our new readers. And bring the Strace Heritons to Earth. <laughs> they don't last long. <laughs> you don't say. They wouldn't. Because they're used to walking around like normal. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. It's not like, well, yeah. And they also suck Yeah, they just death. take a stroll no, they, they, and then they, someone just... It's weird. The turtles them. need oxygen to breathe on the Triceratons world, but the Triceratons don't have a hard time. Hmm. They, they do notice that it is hard to breathe, but they don't seem to have any problem with like, it. Like, yeah, but I'm really tough, though. Yeah. So I can deal with it. Unlike you pussy turtles. That's <laughs> right. We can't breathe our air. So while that's Weak happening, amphibians. You know, we see like one of the uh, news reporters is just like outside of TCRI, they're like, well, the governor has just gotten permission to send in the troops and get the National Guard and like battering ram open the door and get into the T and figure out what's going on with this crazy ass building. <laughs> right. We're on TCRI watch. It's day 32 <laughs> on our coverage of watching this big building and who's in it. And we can't get in. We've happening. tried many times. We've, We've tried delivering food. <laughs> We tried candy grams. We've rung the doorbell and run away. We've pretended like we don't want to go in. We even tried to drop off flowers. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing's working. And so we're going to have to blast our way in. So uh, anyway, everybody teleports back onto the pad. And the, you know, the Ultron's like, ah, crap, Triceratons. There goes the plan. And I hate these guys. And the Triceratons don't recognize them. And they're like, ah, great. Look at how many words are oh on my these God. pages. Like, what happened to this book? It's just, yeah. Well, they're like, we need to really over-explain. Like, yeah, look at that. We're turtles. <laughs> this is the same we, bug. We well, there's no more action. Yeah, happened. Like, what happened? Like, we it's not a fight. We strike hard and fade into the night. <laughs> anyway, Triceratons, what an unfortunate coincidence that we sent the turtles to a planet infested with these reprehensible sorons. <laughs> like, what? Okay. So. All right. I mean, it's still fun. Yeah, I it's mean, it's just a right? different book. It's very, it's not what you were sold. It's not what and I signed up for. No. At all. That's right. That's what the Ninja Turtles is. No, but it, keep, it kept evolving. Suddenly we got like mousers. Yep. Yeah. We went from like ninjas, which we expected, to like evil robots and mad scientists. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. To, to space aliens. Brain aliens. Yeah, space aliens. Uh, and then dinosaur aliens. <laughs> yep. Anyway, so. Uh, and there's goofy robots. Dinosaur aliens and a psychic robot. Yeah, yeah don't forget about the future toy. Uh, so, uh, anyway, it, it all goes to crap. Like, you know. There's a big, huge fight. And a big, big fight. The, all the Triceratons are murdered. One of them says, for the Republic. Yeah. I guess they were a Republic. Well, the, the Triceratons. Triceratons. Instead yeah. of the Federation. That's right. right, that's right. Well, that makes me sympathize with them. Yeah, Do you, does it? Have you seen their <laughs> homeworld? They solve their problems with gladiatorial combat. Right, that's true. No, 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 that's just Saturday Night TV. Well, they have debates and that's, things. That's true, they, <laughs> they have civilization. So anyway, the, uh, they, they, they kill the, they slaughter the dinosaurs again. And, <laughs> again. Uh, and so ultimately, everyone has a minute to breathe, and the Ultrams are like, they, they talk to one of them, and they're like, oh, Leonardo, get this. And Leonardo's like, what the crap? How do you know my name? And he's like, if you all shut up for a second, <laughs> we could explain to you that we learned it from someone who really wants to see you. And then they bring Splinter out. So everyone like has a happy reunion like, day, and they got Splinter back. I can see why they didn't do this in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. He's limited to Shredder. <laughs> As opposed to the Triceratons. Honestly, that'd but be a four-hour movie. I, I would love to see Jim Henson's Creature Shop make some effing Triceratons. Oh. Because the turtles look great. Yep. I know what a Triceratops looks like. That would be friggin' awesome. <laughs> I guess I do know what they look like because yeah. Jim Henson made the Dinosaurs show. I was going to say the Bebop and Rocksteady. 
I've never seen Bebop and Rocksteady made with animatronics. Mm. That's true. I've only seen them done with disappointing CGI. <laughs> that being said, they're hilarious. I do love them in that movie because that movie is a real guilty pleasure of mine. Me and my poor wife were the only ones in that theater seeing that movie. <laughs> and I clapped my hands and I cheered at the end because there was no one else to make fun of me. <laughs> except for my wife who was like, you, you owe me big time. <laughs> we need to see The Secret World of Ariadne like right away. And I was like, okay, and we never did. Oh. So the turtles are now like friends with the brain monsters? They were never enemies to begin with. The brain monsters were always like just there to observe. Yeah, Krang's just a dick. Yeah, that Krang, he's, a, well, no, he. Is he even a thing? Krang's not in this, no. They made him up for the cartoon. What? They just used the visuals. Yeah, they this. saw a brain monster, they're like, oh, that's gotta be a bad guy. Yes. But, but they're not. No. You're, it's almost like you're quoting verbatim what Peter Laird said. <laughs> this is an abomination. The Ultrams are well-meaning, bureaucratic brain monsters. Where's That's the why they're Technodrome? Brains. They're smart. They're smart enough to know the difference between right and wrong. What? Where's the Technodrome? Not in this. Doesn't exist. Well, who, who would drive it? There's no Krang, there's no Shredder. What? I know. We made it up for the cartoon. But, but it's so iconic. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> it's got a drive God damn it. I know. Who yeah. knows why? Oh, so it could roll down and hit your turtle action figures. Damn, I wanted some more like lore and backstory on the Technodrome, yeah, and there, there aren't- There <laughs> literally isn't any. Whatever you saw on the cartoon is what you get. But there's nothing in the cartoon, it's just there. Yeah, that's right. And you just have to accept it. You just have to accept it, yeah. Sometimes our myths <laughs> come from hollow places. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Well, that's frustrating. I agree. April returns to the scene of the crime. She out, checks out the TCRI building, she knows like, that the turtles went in there because they told her that they were going to go in there. Right. And you know, but it's it, been a month. <laughs> well, <laughs> or a day. Like a few days. I, it's unclear. I to think me. it's been like two days. Okay. It's not very, very long. We, it just it just feels like it. <laughs> but uh, April goes there and she like ends up like talking to a soldier where she's like, please, like don't do, go in there. Like my I, friends I, are in there. She was like, my friend went there to apply for a job and he never came out. And he's like, all right, I'll tell you because like that sounds like a plausible story. Mm. And so he's like, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna burst in there, or they're gonna level the place. So like, your friends are dead. Like, good luck. So she's <laughs> like, thanks a lot. And so she can worry over there, uh, which she does. Uh, you'd think that would be an opportunity for like April to like sneak in to and, do like, something. Bump right. into them. And, nope. Instead, oh, they're just, gonna die. I have to get in there. Yeah. She's like, oh, I guess there's nothing to be done. Oh, they're gonna die. Well, I guess my life will go back to normal. <laughs> yeah. Right. So she goes back well, to her apartment the and cries. Thing. So the turtles uh, end up like with the Ultram and the Ultram are like, you know, watching TV and they're like, oh my God, they're coming through the friggin' doors. Like, well, there's nothing we can do. And you broke the transport locator because it was able to do the thing that we need. Like it had like two coordinates. It had like our home world and wherever the hell we sent you by accident. We were able to find like your energy signature from the machine and teleport you here. That's how we were able to bring you back. But we didn't expect like all the way from these Triceratons, it crushed the translocation device. It, it does not, but it, it because like Mikey fell on the machine in the first place. It, they, they, they'd need weeks to fix it, but we don't have weeks because we have people pouring in through the front door. So we're gonna have to just abandon the, the area. Mm -hmm. Because the idea was that like, they were a, where the Ultram came from, they were an observational crew and they came here like a while back and uh, they had some like engine trouble and they crash landed here. A couple, like a third of their force died. Mm. And so they integrated into human life and they used their like, technology and they're like we see one of them as like a stock boy at a grocery store and it's like the idea is that they all work and they all amass like like american currency enough to buy the building lot for the tcri building right and they use their like salvage ship to you know reverse engineer their technology it's kind of like men in black they're yeah. like hiding among us exactly but only to go to work and then go back to the building that they bought. Right. And, uh, and and oh, they were able to like eventually reach back to the home world and the home world's like, I mean, you're there and you've been there for like a decade. You might as well just keep going. Like, you know, you're right. there to well, observe. Well, you're explorers. So, working out yeah. great, yeah. yeah. Just, just Good job. Keep, keep running your findings. Yes. And so they do. Okay. And, uh, and, and they also explain that like this happened like 15 and a half years ago, which is exactly the same time the turtles were created. And they right. explain that like- Some of our ooze got away. One of our ooze <laughs> canisters fell off of the truck on the way to the TCRI building and fell in the sewer. Well, now what we know, was the ooze for? Uh, it was just incidental. It was just part of our shit. What do you use it for? Well, who, who cares? Why are you asking so many questions? <laughs> what do you use your ooze for? Jesus, um, that's hard right? to say. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's makeup. Yeah, mostly, uh, yeah. <laughs> Because this, when we, when you put the ooze on one of our living creatures, it makes them into a sentient bipedal humanoid. Yeah. <laughs> well, your biology we is totally different than ours. That come to life. 
I have a brain too, but if I put petroleum jelly on it, like I'm, it's not going to turn into a brain man. Well, ours yeah, do. Yeah, well, ours uh, does. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Look, it's not designed to work with your physiology, yeah. okay? Unexpected things can happen. I didn't know it would do that, but yeah. that's... It's kind of interesting. Right, actually, why don't you stick around with right? it? And you wouldn't be sentient without it, so what are you complaining about? Well, you're welcome. <laughs> You'd probably be dead by now. 15 years? That kid would have given up on you after a year. Plus, you would have gotten salmonella. Do you know what the mortality rate of like turtles in of captivity baby is? Baby turtles in captivity is? It's, it's pretty like, much like 24 hours. <laughs> it's like a carnival goldfish. You know, they're all sick. All of them. They infect each other in the pool. Right. It's already dead by the time you <laughs> get it. You know, dead in fish a side swim. note, I was about to say. So the Ultra were like, well, we gotta bail. We, we just gotta bail. Yep. So, I think bail. Yeah, bail. 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 All right, bail. They're like, all right, let's go. And the turtles are like, great. What are we gonna do? We, like, well, well, what should we do? We would have teleported you to wherever you wanted to go, but you broke the damn machine. The, the machine is only gonna be able to take us to our home world or where you just were. And I don't mm. think you wanna go back there. And they're like, Shit! Well, why don't they just walk out? I don't understand. Because the because the place is, is besieged by by the national guard. I see. So if they t set foot outside, they'll just be it's blown over. away. Exactly. What if they put on trench coats and disguise themselves? Yeah, you think that would be like a thing? They don't and have, they don't have any trench coats. And it is in the cart. Yeah, that's right. So anyway, <laughs> hey man, where are we gonna get trench coats? Where are we gonna get them though? Uh, you have lab coats in here. Yeah. You have clothing for your weird metal shells. You have flesh suits for your robots. <laughs> put them on us. Oh. Just, just be big, weird, fat guy. <laughs> with your, with your, with skin giant hunchbacks. So, and, and we're naked. <laughs> <laughs> They'll know we're men, though, because our tails be poking out. That's at <laughs> least a plan. It's <laughs> at least an idea. Or go to space again. It's like, we're just there. I'm not going back there, man. Well, space sucks. Yeah, but if you go to space with them, they'll be able to send you back home. Right? It's just, Maybe. It's, a, it's a quick stopover. It's a layover at best. So the, the Ultram like turn on like their defense mechanisms, which are, by the way, like stun lasers. Mm. They're not meant to hurt anybody because they're like, we're not bad guys. Right. So like the army's like, oh crap. Like there's like friggin' like discs fall off the walls and then become robots and start zapping at people. Like, oh my God. And they, they're hiding. And like eventually Jesus. one of them notices that like after somebody gets blasted, one of them notices that they're, they're like, none of us are being hurt. Mm. We're just being stunned. So like, then I guess we're just freaking invincible. So they just start running through it. Like, oh my shoot God. me, stunned? bitch, yeah. yeah. You don't know that they're stunned. <laughs> they're just lying there unconscious. They're afraid they to kill. Be dead. Get them. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Quit the bazooka. So. <laughs> they're practically defenseless. They don't know how to fight. <laughs> they're weak. <laughs> they think they can just stun you and that will somehow stop. Yeah. They don't, they don't know idiots. who they're wrestling with. <laughs> Which Kill is, them all. Which is fair. So they, they, they you know, storm the area, and like so, it's like this. Oh my God! Like it's so tense. The the turtles, and the, you know, they're like, oh, fire up the machine. And the turtles, are like, we don't want to go. I don't want to go into space, but I don't want to get killed by the army. And they're like, sorry, last trip going. Come on. And well, like, those oh. are your two choices. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, okay. And so uh. they they run onto the thing, and uh, and, uh, and 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 then everyone disappears. And the army arrives, and they're like, oh my god, look at this friggin' place! And then like a polite voice comes on the last speaker, like, this building is about to explode. Please make your hasty exit in the next 30 seconds. And they're like, ah! <laughs> oh no. So they run out. Oh, it'll explode with stun energy. We'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Yes, men, stay here, stay on your ground. <laughs> <laughs> we know they can't back up their threats. <laughs> oh no. Hundreds of soldiers were dead. <laughs> were, were murdered mercilessly by we don't know who. So then we cut back to April's apartment, and she's like, you know, oh, you know, the, mach the, the building blows up, and uh, everyone's like, oh my god, just as quickly as it came onto the scene, it's gone. We have no idea what happened. We have no context for it, and we'll never know what happened with the with the space laser and the suspicious uh, building. And then uh, April hears something in the bathroom, and so she goes over to the bathroom, and all the turtles and Splinter are in a pile in the shower, and uh, they're like. Man, the Ultram leader said that we would be teleported to our living room, but I guess that's what I get for like kicking him. That's what like Raphael says. And so uh, they get teleported to the bathroom and April's like, yay! And the You're turtles back. are back. Oh, no, they, they went to the planet. They must have gone. They had to. That's yeah, right. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then they're like being there, they're like, all right, well, you're on our home planet. We have translocation devices. I can yeah, easily send you that's back. That's true. We'll send these. you back to, where is it? April's apartment? Yeah, April's apartment. Right across the street. Oh, type right that, right. Oh, yeah. I'll Done. type in the longitude and latitude of April's apartment. Got it. Right into the right into the machine. You'll go into the living room. Yep. By the way, your living rooms have toilets in them, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. 
they're just lucky they didn't get like morphed into each other because yeah. they're in a pile. Right. So they're like touching. Oh, I know. It's yeah. very easy like for to fly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the the ultra make a point of saying like, oh, it's very you're, safe. You're lucky that you teleported anywhere when you were teleported to begin with. Right. That you weren't teleported into space. Right. The, statistically speaking, the most likely thing would have been for you to just be in empty space. Yes. <laughs> so it's actually kind of miraculous you landed anywhere, much less a place with oxygen rich environment. Like it's amazing. It's a one into like. Trillion. Trillion, trillion chance. <laughs> yes. You're the luckiest beings to have ever existed. So, do you have any, like, lucky numbers you want me to write down? <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the Ninja Turtles uh, opens with some insane shit. And, yeah. and goes pretty freaking fast. Yes. Yeah, it, it, go, it, yeah, it moves. Zero to 100. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but, Oof. yeah, and, and uh, this this... That is not what I was expecting. I knew there was like crazy out of space stuff. I didn't know how like fast it happened. Immediate. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I know. And no Dimension X. No. Was that invented by the cartoon also, or is it just later? It's made up by the cartoon. No. Yeah. What about the Rock Men? Are they? It's the Stone Warriors. Yeah. yeah. Sto They're from Dimension X cartoon. <sighs> Bebop, Rocksteady, Krang, the D the Stone Warriors, the Technodrome. So it's inspired by Daredevil for like two issues. For an issue. For yeah. an issue, yes. really. Two and a half. <laughs> you fight the Triceratons in the video game, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 No. And the Rock Men. Yes. Yeah. They just no, the they just smoosh it all together. Turtles in Time is just a hodgepodge of all the Turtles iconography that's available at the time. Right. It's like put it all in there. Yeah. No. And yeah, which is fine. I but mean, the Triceratons shows were never in the in the cartoon show. I don't recall if they were in the cartoon show. What I mean, like it? the Triceratons. Oh, I don't remember them. I bet they were. I think they were. Okay. But like. Everyone gets at least one episode. Like there's yeah. like Toka and Razar are in at least one episode of the cartoon show. Yeah. And it's like so yeah, they they there's the cartoon show gets everybody eventually. Yeah, the cartoon show covers a lot of ground. Yeah. And eventually the cartoon show goes like off the rails, but it it's does. long after the cartoon show's expiration date anyway, so right. it's okay. Yeah. But uh yeah. So yeah, and then uh the partnership dissolved. Mm. Uh, Eastman was more interested in making comic books, like getting into the comic book industry. Right. He, uh, I don't want to just self-publish for the rest of my life. Like, I, I, I don't want to work make, on this one thing. I'm. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm I want to like like write do Spider Man. Also, I'm starting to run out of ideas because like, <laughs> Jesus, uh, this is insane. We did yeah. all this. We did all the ideas. I have no more ideas. I, have, I did them all in five. Well, I issues. killed Treader in the first freaking issue. <laughs> That's right. What a mistake. They did bring him back, but like by issue ten, Eastman and Laird are done. Yeah. As partners. Um, Eastman sells his shares of Turtles to Laird. Laird keeps the comic going and also gets a new cartoon show going, which is everyone's most beloved version, the 2003 animated series. Oh. Uh, which is a little bit more like know that one. grounded and uh, deliberate. Mm. But, uh, and then Laird will sell all of his shit to Nickelodeon. Yeah. Like tens of millions of dollars. Okay. Eastman will see none of that. But yeah, well, you sold all your you shares to your Laird. Stuff, yeah. So like, yeah, man. Remember that Cerebus character? <gasps> there he is. He's in there. Yeah. He's in the back, yeah. looking like Han Solo. Yep. That's fun. Little little uh, little homage there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but we did get like a we got ten Eastman and Laird comics over a period of like four years. Oh, really? No, three four years. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the, these are highly detailed. So yeah. Yeah. This would have taken a long time. Oh yeah. Well, and they also like moved to different states, and you know, mm. so like they have to. Like, yeah, there's probably like a delay between certain issues. Big time. Oh, sweeping delays between issues. <laughs> None of them were even called Crane. No. If you ever want to read the Ninja Turtles, I'd say go for it. Uh, they, they've they made a pretty... When I was a kid growing up, swept up in turtle fever. Mm. You say good lord a lot? Good lord! Good lord! Yeah, you know I do. <laughs> but uh, I, I couldn't get access to these. Mm. Yeah, they weren't in like adult. handy dandy reprints. Oh. No, they were, just, they were just impossible to get. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. they were collected. Yeah, and like now people were collecting them and, and hoarding them. That's right. Well, well yeah. and well, they were a very a limited run. That's right. right. Like like, three, like six thousand copies the first issue. You know, like, yeah. yeah, they were super limited and hard to find, and you just had to like trust your deeper knowledge comic book fan friend or retailer to tell you who the Ninja Turtles were. But even then, like, there were only six thousand copies the first issue. Like, odds are they didn't know. Right. You know, they're only <laughs> gleaning what they heard or read about in trades. Or saw in a commercial for a cartoon show. Yeah, and even then, the cartoon show, again, is drastically different from the source material. Hmm. They have a little glimpse into the original Ninja Turtles run. Uh, of course, this will continue. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I, I don't need to I'm do more. I'm definitely good. I was good after issue three? Yeah. 
Maybe four, yeah. Yeah, I was excited that we were going to do the first seven because it at least wraps it all up in a neat little package, mm. but explores exactly what you would like have experienced as a Turtles fan in the 80s. When you were so, like, oh, well, I'm reading the Turtles, here we go. What? It gets crazy. I appreciate the fact that there's so much here that's different than what I knew. Yes. Mm. And it makes me want to read more. That's fair. Even Ninja Turtles 2. You know, you, it's like you're, the secret of the ooze is that it's from space and there's aliens and stuff. Right, right. And in fact, there was going to be, they didn't do it, but David Warner plays the doctor who's clearly Do Baxter Stockman, but isn't. Mm -hmm. um, but they wanted to make a reveal that at the end, he lifts up his shirt and there's an Ultraman sign that he's been a robot the whole time. Oh, yeah. that'd be sweet. They didn't even shoot that. Yeah. That was an idea that was gonna indicate like, oh, we'll go into space in the third one. That right. is a great it's idea. Like, well, that sounds expensive. What if it went to Feel Japan in the third one? <laughs> right, that sounds cheap. That, that sounds, sounds like something we could just film on a set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, uh, these turtle costumes are kind of getting worn down and uh, Jim Henson's Creature Shop is kind of expensive. Can we downgrade all the puppet work too? Oh, absolutely. Like, can we make Splinter look drastically different? Like he caught fire? <laughs> uh, can we make it so that he's just a torso? Yeah, like he never actually appears full bodied at any point. <laughs> he only appears like through windows and stuff. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Great. Oh, I think we got a movie. Perfect. It's like, of course you have a movie! It's the Ninja Turtles! Yeah. But you don't have a good movie. The movie that killed the franchise is this one! I like the fact that you hint at this, that Splinter is not, or I'm sorry, Shredder, they bring him back yeah. from being dead. We didn't even touch that in this! No! That's no. later on! No, these guys are like, Shredder? Who the hell's that? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm moving on. I'm way, I'm, I'm light years past Shredder. He was just the origin, man. Yeah. That's just where it started. Right? But, but like, what even are, what is their mission even? Well, their mission, and literally their mission was kill Shredder. Right. And then and they, they succeeded. Just, and then they, they just do? blunder from one thing into another. That's right. Yeah. Well, in the, the next story, it's like they meet a new person, you know, and they have, mean, to, they have to protect her and Splinter, who is their like master and, you know, who, who dictates what they do is off the table so they can do other things. Mm -hmm. And then we take them as far away from Earth as humanly possible. Yeah. So they can have another adventure where they kill people with their weapons. <laughs> Not really people. Well, no, that's true. They're sentient life. Anyway. And my sons, you were very honorable on this other planet, right? Oh yeah, totally. Definitely super honorable. That's... You didn't like kill anybody. Well, no, like but, guns, uh, right? No one... You can use swords, right. you can use yes. staffs and whatever. But, you but didn't like, you didn't shoot. use guns. No. Uh, n no. I didn't use a gun. It's, it depends on how you define gun, I suppose. Yeah. Fine. I, you, I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't fire any bullets. I fired no bullets at any assailant. Master Splinter. I think, I how's that? Need, yeah, and I think that's all you need to know about that's that. That's probably where you should stop. Don't, 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 don't push. Don't, don't push don't any digging. further. You're not gonna like what you find. Because <laughs> I definitely can't. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah, Donnie's still got to keep one. He's got it. Oh, yeah. Well, his bow is broken, so. Yeah, he's like, he well, needs so I need gun. something. Yeah. Leonardo has swords, Raphael has size, Michelangelo has the nunchucks, and Donatel has a gun. <laughs> oh, it's a laser pistol. Yeah. <laughs> no, after he after it like runs out of charge, he's like, ah, screw it. He just gives an Uzi. So, oh, no, guys. The Foot Clan is coming. Pew, 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 pew. They're dead. Got, got him. him. Another win for Donatello, the best turtle. <laughs> This isn't as much fun as it used to be. Boom, headshot! Boom, headshot! <laughs> I'm getting better at this thing every day! Boom, headshot! We should take this act on the road. <sighs> Donnie... Why don't you take this Donnie, act we on gotta, the road? We gotta have a talk. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, that's the Ninja Turtles, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Cowabunga. What would Donatello do to the gun? What would he mod it, like... <sighs> Well, that he would think was really great, and the other turtles would think was super lame and stupid. Maybe he'd make it into a teleporter gun. You know, oh, like, you shoot it, it yeah. sends people places. Okay. Right? Maybe it'd be a freeze ray. A freeze ray? Not oh, a good freeze ray. I mean, we're yeah. talking about the animated series, Donatello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was a part in this where the, we saw the uh, the arena. Yeah. The Triceratons. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it said Tri Sports. Yes. And I was yep. just like, that's too close to TCRI. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, everything's tri. Yeah, it all it's all connected. That's right. Yes. I like I like that they have like a three sided <laughs> arena because they have three horns. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah, it's theming. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea that it's the tri sports arena. Do you have three sports? <laughs> and if so, did you pick no? it because you have three horns? <laughs> like three sports? What? No. What's well, tri sports? Yeah, tri sports. Yeah. <laughs> it's just shorter. 
<sighs> yeah, try sports. This place is stupid. Guy hit this planet. <laughs> Get me the hell out of here. It's not a planet. It's a series of asteroids <laughs> and domes over the... Hey, he's got a point. He's got three. Oh, my God. 